Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday, and with me, as always, is my co-host, Nick Mason. Hello. In this very dimension, we something something <laughs> comment tying into the movie we're talking about. Oh, that's very good. That's very clever. Thank you. If that were a completely thought through sentence, that would have been incredible. If I was doing a YouTube thumbnail, it might be me and yeah. I'm looking normal, but then behind me I'm spinning out. Like there's different oh, versions of great. me like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah, nice, But nice. it's got the time. You know? No, absolutely not. Yeah, yeah. No. But I think I think this is better actually. Just it's, a peek, it's a peek behind the curtain. Okay. Like, uh, like like if we didn't respect the listeners, yeah, we would be like we would we would probably do that that thing where we would do the comment. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. would think of the comment, but because we respect the listeners, yeah. Instead, we we're explaining to them, we're giving them a peek behind the curtain of what we would have done. But we didn't. We didn't do it because we respect them too much. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's exactly Man, right. there's a lot of things that, you know, <laughs> we certainly seem to respect the listener because of what we don't, yeah, yeah. you know, provide. It's a lot of layers, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, I think so too, yeah. yeah. But you know what we do provide, Mason? Mm-hmm. We're not spoon-feeding you here these jokes, no, folks. No, 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 we no. Give you, we give you the structure to allow you to build the jokes yourself. I, I, I might say this for the end. I went, went to a wedding mm-hmm. and there was this... Like, Wait, are you hungover? No, I'm fine. Okay, and there right. was a... um The MC, it was, he was good, right? But then he mm-hmm. did a joke about... Uh, about a, about a spoon and a string and a penis, and I might like save it for the end to be like, oh wow, this explain is a bit of this to me, like, oh, what? so you didn't get it? No, I got it, but I'm oh. like, why? What is the? I see you're frantically <laughs> googling what it means. <laughs> is it about? Is it about wedding nights or something? Yeah, is wedding night. No, no, it's like wait stuff. It doesn't matter. I, I, I might do it later if okay. I remember. Please remind me if I don't. You I'll... know what? I'm, I have no doubt that listeners are Googling it right now. <laughs> so they, they'll, by the time we get to the end and you explain this joke, they'll be like, we know the string and the egg of the whatever joke. Yeah. It's... The spoon joke. <laughs> we get it, James. Okay, so uh, there are time codes. They're on YouTube right now and there's a guy, there's a, like, a, like, a, like a generically handsome generic dude and he's like, hey, guys, <laughs> welcome to my channel where I explain various wedding jokes. <laughs> You hear about the one with the spoon and the egg and the string? <laughs> it's no egg, it's a penis. Oh, you know? oh right, right, I forgot. <laughs> anyway, maybe <laughs> later. Okay. Uh, but speaking of, if you do want to jump to that, uh, Collings who edits these, he always puts time codes in the descriptions. That's We're going right. to be talking about the fallout from Fast X, Mason. Oh! We're going to talk, be talking about a brand new Doctor Who, got a couple of trailers in Trailers Ahoy. <laughs> uh, Darkman sequel? Yeah. And then of course, maybe. Maybe. And then, of course, we're going to get right into uh, Doctor Strange in the multiverse of madness. Aye. So let's kick things off, please. Uh, <laughs> the way that we always like to, with some Fast X news. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> Mate. So uh, to catch everybody up to date, uh, Justin Lin left the, the franchise. He's He's... He directed five. Mm-hmm. He was a week into doing this latest one. We don't know why. It was all like, this is creative differences and we're all friends or whatever. You know, mm. they released a statement. But there's since been some movement in terms of what may have actually gone down. We speculated that maybe Vin Diesel, uh, Xantix maybe pushed him out. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, it turns out that then that's probably what happened. <laughs> and I, I know some people like messaged and said, you guys are right. And I look, I appreciate that, but it, it wasn't really like a big stretch to be like, yeah, I think with uh, I think we've got to figure out. I think maybe there was some maybe there was some uh, maybe there there was some egos yeah. attached to that. Sure, exactly. But this is uh, this is potentially what happened via the Hollywood Reporter. So Justin Lin was handling writing duties on the movie and believed he had a locked script going into it. Universal and Diesel had other thoughts. A key location that had been secured was cut due to its Eastern European location amid the war in Ukraine, and the movie still hadn't cast one of its villains yet. On top of that. Even as Lynn tried to draw lines in the sand, the studio said it would be sending a writer to London to polish dialogue for some of the actors, a move that was expected but apparently not welcomed by Lynn at that time, sources say. The constantly moving target proved too much for the seasoned Lynn, who on April 23rd had a major disagreement with Diesel. The four-person meeting had begun with Diesel having new notes. It ended with a slammed door. Justin finally had, had enough and said... This movie is not worth my mental health, says one source. Both Lynn and Diesel declined to comment for this story. My goodness. So, yeah, there you go. So basically there was a bunch of changes from the studio and Vin Diesel and he was like, I'm I'm not doing this anymore. All right then. And apparently the payday he turned down could have been like around $10 million, but also he's made five of these. So he's made $10 million, I would say, at least 
twice over the, you know, in yeah, he's that, probably doing fine. I yeah. Think, yeah. Oh, the, the, just the world you could live in to be like, no, I could, t- I don't want to see this guy's face for the next three months. I'm turning down $10 million. I love a good, like I quit story. It's fantastic. Yeah. Right. Just someone just being like, I'm just fucking, I'm not doing this mm. and I'm going. Give it to Louis Leterrier apparently. <laughs> exactly. Who directed two of the transporter One movies. Two? Yes, that's okay, right. Yeah, okay. uh, he also did the incredible Hulk sort of. But Edward Norton maybe took over on a lot of that. Oh, that reminds me. So the the last time we talked about this, I read on Twitter that Vin Diesel could not take over as director. So I have been informed that that is because of something called the Eastwood Rule. I did read this. this Uh, Is this your one bit of news this week? This is my one bit of news, James. A rule legislated by the Directors Guild of America that prohibits an actor or producer from firing the director and then becoming the director themselves. So So apparently Clint Eastwood fired... Philip Kaufman from the Civil War uh, movie The Outlaw Josie Wales in the 70s. Yes. Uh, the, two men, the two men had artistic differences. <gasps> Kaufman's insistence on authenticity clashed with Eastwood's spaghetti western kind of vibe. Right, okay. Um, also, apparently, Eastwood hired Sondra Locke, who was, I think, maybe Kaufman's girlfriend. Okay. Like he was just like... Yeah, you could do it. Yeah, you could do this. <laughs> but anyway, it's, so the idea is that you can't wait for the director to, like, put all the pieces in place because a lot of the time that's what the director does. They kind of, you oh, know, okay. they set everything and they set all the schedules. And all the, the hard put, stuff. All the hard stuff and all the scheduling and all the setups and all the storyboard, yeah. all that sort of stuff. And, like, once the... Or navigate it at least yeah, for yeah. people to be yeah. able to do that. And yeah. for, like, for a lot, like, a lot of movies, I think, especially big budget ones now, like, it all gets set up and then the director is just there to be like, hey, it's me, all right, let's go. Yeah. Let's action, you know, what have you. Let's action, Let's everyone. action, they say. It's, I'm pretty sure. I'm a Hollywood insider. I can tell. But I, and the idea is then you can't then fire that director and, and they've done all the work to set up and then just be like, but it's me now. I did so, this. Yeah, yeah, So Yeah, this is yeah. me. Yeah, fantastic. Very fantastic. Uh, so uh, so people also might know uh, Louis Letier. He did, remember that Unleashed Jet Li movie? Yeah. I, me- I, I remember watching oh, that Hoskins years ago. That. I remember liking it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he did Clash of the Titans, which I think is the first of those two movies, mm. uh, he did "Now You See Me." He also oh, yeah, re- okay. more recently that was nearly a good movie, I think so. And he, uh, he also did ten episodes of "The Dark Crystal," which is a show that people quite like. Uh, you know that? Oh, the new Netflix. Yeah, one. yeah I, right. I didn't watch it. I'd never really. Saw, I don't think I saw the original, so I'm like, I'm not watching this new one. But apparently, it's very good. My brother, the one you don't like, likes it quite mm. a lot. And he also has worked on Lupin. So yeah, oh, he's, the, the, he's a he's a he's a jewel safe. Probably. Okay, okay great. He, pro- he probably is, he's probably a jewel he's thief. He's either a jewel thief or he's a descendant of a jewel thief. It's wow. something like that. Yeah, pretty good, right? <laughs> what a claim to fame. Mm. So, yeah, look, he's a good get, especially last minute, because he's clearly, like, he's worked on big big budget stuff before. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think that, I think this is, like, considering that, well, this, here's some more information. This is via um, uh, THR also. The budget was creeping up to the $300 million mark. And uh, that is without any marketing or and publicity spend, and over a hundred million dollars of that was for the the people in it alone, yeah, the right. cast. Because not only you've got everybody existing, then they brought in Charlie Theron yeah. and Jason Momoa, and you don't they're not cheap, you know. Sure, they'll tell you all about it. You'll ask them, they'll tell you how much they made on their latest movie. Did you know that? I did not know that's that. That's true. Actually, that's a that's a Hollywood clause. If you go up to them and ask any. Working yeah. actor, how much they, have they to, make? The, the pre, they have to tell you the previous one, but not anything beyond that. It's that's wow. That's, you don't have to. Yeah, that's true. That's that's hot. That's a hot Hollywood. Bit. <laughs> that's a hot Hollywood tip. Yeah, that's right. So there you go. That's wow. fun, James. Uh, uh, coming along from the the Eastwood rule, mm. uh, when writer and director Richard Tuggle failed to meet Eastwood's expectations during work on the movie Tightrope in 1984, the Eastwood rule prevented him from having Tuggle removed from the project. Oh, his own rule. Yeah. Why did he put it in place? I don't know. I mean, he didn't, obviously. He didn't. The director's <laughs> guilty, yeah. Eastwood did take over many of the directing duties for the project, but Tuggle still got the title and stayed involved with the movie until the end. Okay, that's interesting. So there you go. I right. guess that's this rule was also, and like him wanting creative control is partially responsible for him pretty much directing everything he's in now? I think like so, yeah. Mostly, yeah. as far as I can tell. Yeah, and I guess also like Eastwood is, I guess, kind of from like that era where it was very unusual for an actor to also be a director. Yeah. I think they, because they didn't want an actor to have that sort of power. Yeah. They, they, they want the studio to kind of own them. Yeah, exactly. Better. Yeah. So like, and, and so we've, you know, we've moved on that from that era where a lot of, you know, once people get a lot of star power, they're like, I'm going to direct something. Yeah. Yeah, that goes. Give me a gun also. <laughs> mm. <laughs> 
That's good fun. That's good. That's a good rule, Mason. And yeah. what a wonderful one bit of news a mere 50 years after it, it came into place. You're yeah, very welcome. But relevant to this That's very true. day. Yeah. Anyway, I don't think this Fast X is going to be, like, great. <laughs> And I don't think it's... What, this $300 million spectacular? <laughs> I don't know. I just, as I said last week... It's I, churning through directors. I just haven't really enjoyed the last two to three, including the spin-off, okay. you know? They're just kind of there and things happening and I don't What know. if there's a puppet section? Oh, that's, that'd be great, obviously. <laughs> the Fast and Furious crew go through... They, they tumble their cars through some sort of large <laughs> hadron collider. I mean, the, the multiverse is hot right now. It's true. They tumble through and they end up in the Dark Crystal universe and they're like... Hello. Dark Crystal puppets. Hello. Yes. Give us your car. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> One of the Dark Crystals. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever watch the original Dark Crystal? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I don't think I've seen it. I can't remember. Anyways, Mason. Go on. Uh, this broke actually just before we started recording, but there is a new Doctor Who. Oh, that's a new. That's, that's very good. An actor by the name of, I'm going to pronounce this wrong, but apparently it is Ashuti Agatwa. And you might know him. Uh, I haven't watched this show, but he's in Sex Education, mm. and he's. Uh, I think he's. I think he won a BAFTA for that potentially. That or another thing. He's Ooh. a BAFTA winning actor. Okay. Uh, he's also in Horrible Histories, the movie, and also he's twenty nine years old, which means the youngest doctor. Uh, I don't think he's Matt younger Smith. than Matt Smith, but he's younger than me. Every yeah. other Doctor Who has been older than me. Except oh, when they started. When they start, it's the same with Batman, and then Patterson broke that. Wow, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just what happens. And you know you're what taking I mean? this personally. As well. I'm absolutely taking yeah. this is a slight. <laughs> when they did Capaldi, I'm like, I feel really good about this. Mm, right. Look how much younger I am than Peter Capaldi. <laughs> but now, ooh, Jodie Whittaker, still a little bit older, got it a little too close to home. But I was like, okay, that's mm, acceptable. Yeah, yeah. This one, no, I don't like it. Mm. Yeah. So there you go. Anyways, he seems like a good choice. This actor, I know absolutely nothing about, to mm. be honest. Uh, yeah. Let's move on and not check Twitter to see what Twitter thinks about it. I agree. Let me just check. James, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, you're going off. You're abs- Is that what you want me to check? You are going absolutely ham on this new Doctor Who No, James, that's not true. Decision. No. <laughs> James, it's not true. And, of course, a new Doctor means it's the perfect time to dip back in for an episode or two, which is now, oh, how, absolutely, which yeah. is now how we watch Doctor yeah, Who. Yeah, see if it's, you know, see if it's sort of, Gone back to its. The last time I went back was was jo, was the Jodie Whittaker episode, Same, yeah. and they seem to have gone back to like that that educational route. You know, yeah, you remember like the original Doctor Who? It was when it was black and white. Seemed to be a lot about learning. Ugh. Yuck, yuck. And this the, the Jodie Whittaker episodes that I watched, I'm like, oh, I'm learning. I like learning. this. I don't learn. Ugh. Who, I learns? Them, Who learns anymore? No, you know what I mean? Yeah, a waste yeah, yeah. of time. Uh, Mason. For cowards. I agree. Learning. You know, it's not a waste of time. Go on. The trailer's a hoist segment of this ah. show. That's where we go. We break down the new trailers of the week. Now, of course, uh, we've got a long-awaited prequel series coming up very soon, Mason. Like, a bit of some controversial, like, you know, endings in the past and whatnot. It's Game of Thrones, Mason. Yeah, I was, I was, I was I, zagged. Yeah. I was zagged. You thought I was going to zig. You didn't, you? You didn't, I you? I mean... You're tweeting about it right now. Oh, no, I'm going <laughs> off. I didn't even notice, but I'm going right off. <laughs> But uh, did you watch the House of Dragon trailer? No. Okay, so Game of Thrones is back and dragons, etc. Okay. And Matt Smith and so forth. Speaking of Doctor Who, if you were to look at the uh, the the trailer on YouTube right now, does it have a lot of views? Are people thrilled about Great. it? Uh, no, there's a lot from the comments I read. The people are like, uh, yeah, it's like I would have been excited for this like five mm. years ago. Yeah, it's got 9.6 million views, and that's just on the HBO website. That's, that's a website. lot. Though. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good, mm. but it's like. Uh, it's amazing how much better visually it is than other recent fantasy shows. Thank that. That is probably true, actually. There's a, there's a lot of money in this, I reckon. Am I, is, yeah, the top comments are, like, quite popular. And this one said, and so I just went to the latest comments, and this one said, try to ruin my another 10 years, huh? Fuck off, HBO. <laughs> mm. Mm, good point. Yeah. Uh, history does not remember blood. It remembers terrible rushed endings to a series that took up 10 years of my life. Is history remembers blood? Is that the tagline for this? Probably, sure? yeah. yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, the strings at the end brought me to tears. Please, HBO, by humble request, anything less than perfect for this series would be nothing. Nothing! That's you. You're going off on this. I'm going ham <laughs> on these guys. So, yeah, I think they, they have a long way to kind of build back Bit of trust, yeah, yeah. but I, I think it can be done. You know, yeah. it can be Ooh, done. They, they, these aren't the original showrunners, though. This is a no. This is a team. whole new team and new okay. actors and everybody and so forth. So yeah, I think you know. I think the lessons will have been learnt. You know, in terms of like 
rushing a finale <laughs> and you know what I mean? And sure. jumping away to make a Star Wars movie that you then don't make. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, people know that now. Yeah. Yeah, it's called the Eastwood rule, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Cool, okay. Scott Eastwood made it. Scott Eastwood made it? Yeah. I didn't know that. Anyway, of course, there was another trailer this week because it was May the 4th. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we saw a new trailer for uh, Kenobi. Now, Mason, you're a fan of Obi-Wan Kenobi, is that true? Yes, James. <laughs> what do you like about this particular trailer? Gosh, let me think. Did you see Darth Vader in it where they put him together? I did see that, like yeah. a Lego man. Like a Lego man. Yeah, I did see that. Um, they put. The, did you see the uh, the chest plates got spikes right, right, in right into him? Yeah. I wouldn't like that. Yeah. Would you like it? Like a USB stick. Like you'd be, Is that what you think? Yeah, because they had to keep turning it around. <laughs> they put it, it wouldn't go in, so they turned it around, but then it still <laughs> wouldn't go in. So they turned around another and then it went in. Weird. And he's like, this is so painful. It would be, I'd imagine. Yeah. I'm assuming that's all his like fluids and vitamins and stuff, right? He probably needs a bunch yeah. of that stuff to keep yeah, yeah. alive. Because I don't know if you know this, but like in the comics and more of late, like you, he can't be in the suit for that long. Right. Like he, they have to like take him back and basically like hose him down and like put him in back to. <laughs> And then, Hose like, him down in the backyard. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Give him a backyard back to Yeah, and then keep him on, like, keep him in, like, you know, just mm. floating at a thing just sure, until right. they need him again. Right. So, uh. You know what? I'd probably just get a, just get a new guy. Get a new guy? Yeah, get a Don't new guy. Don't you think the Emperor's thought of getting a new guy, Mason? No. Do you think that's never crossed his mind? I think he's been in the management position too long and he thinks all he thinks he's correct all the time. Yeah, you're probably right, I actually. Reckon just, I reckon if somebody would get in his ear and just be like, hey, Sheev. Yeah. Or Shmi, whichever one you are, get a get a new guy in. Get a new. Well, he's got the Inquisitors. Well, that's true. Yeah. You know what I mean. But none of them mm. seem to be matching up. Anyway, mm. we know from uh, follow-on movies that he doesn't get a new guy. That is true. Actually, is that yeah. a spoiler? I don't think so. Okay, good. So there okay. you go. Uh, what else is in that? Trailer, we see a little though? snippet of uh, young Luke Skywalker. He's living his dream. He's uh, he's pretending to be in a. Kill people. Plane, Kill people. Pretending to carpet bomb <laughs> some innocent villages, sure, in, a, in an X wing. Absolutely, we see that. Uh, we see we see uh, Joel Edgerton as uh, yeah, he's Uncle Owen a looking, looking a, a little l- worse for wear. There's a line, looking pretty sweaty. Yeah, what's well, a sweaty place? It's a sweaty place. Yeah, but that's the bit where he's like, "I'm going to trade this boy," and he's like, "Get out of here, yeah, mate! Yeah. You get the fuck out of here!" <laughs> and the last one, turn out, you dumbass, <laughs> you, you dumbass, you fucking flog! Get out of here, mate! <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, classic Aussies. Yeah, just at it. That's you know right. what I mean? Yeah, you looking at my wife, etc. Mm. Uh, what else we got? Ooh, there's some. Uh... Some big city dreams. Oh yeah, some uh, whatever. Oh, that's the Inquisitorious. Uh, so they still he's still been looking for Kenobi for ten years. What is this city? Is this Coruscant? That's that a new one. Doesn't that's... look like Coruscant. No, it looks it's too not. Seedy I, for Coruscant. It's got a name. I can't remember what it is. I did my first trailer breakdown, but uh-huh. basically it's like a like a Vegasy kind of okay. situation. We've got uh, we've got a little bit of um, Obi Wan. He's on a he's on a database there. That's uh, that's some that's like prequel era. That is. That's, that's, that's the that's last photo they have of him. Uh, and uh, look. They are disproving the theory that nobody can read in the Star Wars universe. How do you know that? Oh, that's true. Maybe those are just pretty symbols. <laughs> They're absolutely right. Yeah. He's got a gun. Yeah, he's got what a is gun. his lightsaber for the entirety of I this? think it's like you don't want to use it. It's oh. like not so if you if you don't have to, you don't. See there. He's doing yeah. he can do a bit of uh he can do some flips and some mm-hmm. spins, but he's not. Oh, Kamal, Kamal Nanjiani, Nanjiani is yeah. in this and he's not animated. I I assume. You thought he was going to be a robot. I thought he was going to be a robot, robot sassy robot. No, nah, he's buff now. He can't be a sassy That's robot. True, yeah. I wonder if he's that guy who comes to Tatooine and is like, help me, help me. And then he gets hung. You know, it was in the last trailer. Oh, yeah. yeah I don't know. Yeah, but yeah. Mm. The interesting I think about, the interesting thing about, I think, this series is going to be, one mm. of the things is that all of those Inquisitors are former Jedi. And uh-huh. he's like, so he would know a bunch of them. Sure. You know, because he was one of the guys in the chairs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because once you cut like a, a Sith Lord in half, you get a chair. Like right. that's the rule. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Even if you do it by accident, they have no, to give you a No, it's you. Chair. We shared goss around the water cooler. <laughs> now you're here to kill me? How rude. Very rude. Very rude. Anyway, so that's out uh, end of this month, I want to say. I bought you a cake at the supermarket for your birthday. I went down the shops. And that's the thing, like a lot of them are, are like were children. Betrayal from someone I went down the shops for. <laughs> A lot of them were kids or oh, like right, right. Padawan le- I hate that word. Padawan learners. Uh-huh. Not all of them. So right. like, you know, the, the, the emperor got him young or Darth Vader and was like, yeah, we can we can do something with this, I reckon. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to that. They're doing two episodes, I think, in the first week. Okay. And then it's 
It's, it's only six in total. So, uh, yeah. And they're, they're talking already of like, maybe we'll see, do more episodes, but I kind of don't want them. I kind of want them to just do it and like do it well and not mm-hmm. like leave it open ended for more stuff. I kind of want to like just lock it down and just, but whatever. What about if they did it poorly, but there was a lot of it? <laughs> yeah, well, that's, hmm, that's interesting, actually. You say that. <laughs> so, yeah. an option, isn't it? So, it would never end. It would never and end. And I would hate watch it every yeah, week. Yeah, and, and, and it would get worse and worse, and the actors would get. Like more and more would leave. Yeah, and like you'd you'd like like um, you and McGregor, like he'd be visibly looking at his watch in some scenes because he's like, you know, I have to go and do, I have to do another movie. uh... We're doing the island too. (laughs) Yeah, Um, that would be terrific. So basically, you're talking about the the island goes the opposite of tropical. It's a different island. It's a different island. Well, there was no island in the first one, was there? Yeah. Um, Spoiler alert. Uh, The island too. There's still no island. (laughs) We looked. We couldn't. We couldn't see it. Um, that's the Fear the Walking oh, not the Fear the Walking that's the, the one- island too everybody just has a big bin on their head <laughs> <laughs> they're just wandering around <laughs> there's an island painted okay yeah. anyway what I was going to say like, you're basically talking about the Walking Dead model like mm. a bunch of cast just start leaving yeah. it's called yeah. the Kenobi show but he's not in it yep. you know what it's I mean it's called the Kenobi show <laughs> yeah mm. so that's fun um, but it's, it's one of those shows where I was just thinking about there was a show there was a British show called Spooks. It was called MI6. Yeah, yeah it's in... got Mike McFadden, Brian McFadden. No. Yeah, Brian McFadden. Which McFadden is Mike, it? The, 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 yeah, the guy. The one in Succession. Yeah, yeah, that guy. He's in it. I think but, Brian McFadden might be from but Westlife. But they did the thing in that show a bunch. It was called MI6 in the US, I think. But it, they did the thing in, in that show where one of the cast members left. They just replaced him with an actor who looked very similar and sort yes. of hoped nobody noticed. They were a different character. Matthew McFadden. There we go. But, like, if the blonde MI6 agent, like the blonde lady MI6 agent left, they just replace it with another blonde yeah. MI6 lady, and they're like, mm, cross their fingers, the audience won't notice. That made a, they made a movie of that a few years ago with Kit yeah, Harrington. I remember that. Yeah. They did, there was a similar thing in Australia for uh, Blue Healers. Go on. Australia. I'm listening. Local cop show. Uh, Charlie Clawson was in it, actually. I wasn't listening until just now. But. Yeah. <laughs> but from Tofop and Fofop and various <laughs> other endeavors. Uh, but, yeah, he was in that show. But... There were Lisa McCune was the no one cares about this was the main <laughs> actress in that show and I think it was like five years one at running she won the gold Logie and then she quit and they replaced her with someone who looked exactly like her. Did she still win the gold? She Logie? won it again the next year, even though she wasn't. That wasn't doing it. Maybe there was some kind of date like kind of fudgy where you could be like technically she won it, but she was. Anyway, that's what's going to happen at Kenobi. It's just going to keep going. He's going to win gold Logies. He's going to keep winning even gold when he's not in the show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you to everyone from TV Week for voting <laughs> and clipping that coupon out. <laughs> That's right. They must do a Twitter poll now or something, Yeah, right? probably, yeah. They'd have to. Uh, anyways, there was another trailer which one of us saw this week because the other one didn't want to get up from his chair. It was me. I didn't want to. I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> it was, uh, so when we went to the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Australian Melbourne Premiere, Mason, a premiere event. They they were showing Doctor Strange in one theatre, yep. and on a continuous loop they were playing the Avatar 2 trailer in another theatre. Mm-hmm. And I sat down and I thought, I yep. don't want to get up again. Yeah, but I said, I guess I better go watch this trailer. Mm-hmm. So I went in there and they handed me my 3D glasses and I went, all right. <laughs> and look, and, and like seeing it, okay, no, look, I fucking hate 3D. I still I hate it. I thought it would be better. It was not better. As soon as I put on the glasses and looked at the screen, I was like, I hate this. Let me I ask really you this question. This. Do you think that going to a 2D session of this will be any worse than seeing? Like, no, do, do you I think, think there was be no. Better. Yeah, I, I mean, what? There's no advantage. It, do, it doesn't seem like. I, I think it probably, if you had it in under the right circumstances, and I know that James Cameron has been trying to bring forward, like, glasses 3D technology, yeah. but we're clearly not here, mm-hmm. like, yet. So they're basically doing what they did in 2009. And I think you can adjust, you know what I mean? You sit there long enough in it. Mm-hmm. But, like, but look, as that aside, yeah, it looks incredible. Like, it's a completely crafted world that he's built, and if you love, mm-hmm. like, blue people swimming with things that look like whales oh. and, like, you know, looking forlorn and mm-hmm. holding bow and arrows on each other, then, yeah. yeah. I did see some screenshots that have been put on Twitter, and it did... Like there, there was some sort of like used universe kind of like I saw some like you know military looking Incredible. headquarters stuff that yeah. was looking very good. Yeah, so. oh, no, it's it will be like the the most like visually impressive movie ever made or one of you know things. It's entirely digital mm-hmm. mostly, you know, for the most part. But yeah, look, it's like ten years on or whatever, and they have kids and stuff, and it's the way of water, etc. <laughs> sure, 
you know. Um, I didn't stay like twice. I just went, uh-huh. yep, got it, and I le- and I left. You know, the people were staying twice. I think they were. Yeah. Whoa. But yeah, look, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it. I just I don't like 3D, and I and I just don't. Why stop it? I don't want to do. 3D movies for the next five years again, like we had to oh, last no, time. Oh, don't set any trends, James Cameron. No. Yeah, so I don't know about you, but I did not enjoy that situation. Mm. And they just post-convert everything and it's – I don't look – also, I don't think post-conversion is that much worse than like filming in 3D. That's probably blasphemous. Mm-hmm. But I don't think like the dip in quality is that bad. It's like what it is. It's like it still to me always looks like one image slightly in front of another image. Yeah, huh, yeah. And I, I, I don't need that. Well, to me, it's a whole new world. I mean, I understand, like, depth when I look at a screen, you know what I mean? Like, I yep. get it. If yeah, someone's yeah. at the front and there's something behind them, I understand what's going sure, on yeah. there. Like, I don't need, like, a further yeah. addition to that mm. for me to be immersed in the world. Mm. I hope it's great, though, really. Like, I hope – like, it seems to be getting, like, a positive reception. I've seen some people who have posted, like, there was dead silence when they saw the trailer, but other people, like, there's – Footage of people like whooping and hollering. Were those people time. whooping and hollering dressed as Navi? No, they were dressed as Nazis. I don't know what that is, though. Oh, no. Yeah, it might have been a, I don't know, it's like a different kind of event. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, mate. I don't know why they played the Avatar trailer at one of those events. Yeah, right. But that's what happens, you know? I've got to rile that crowd up somewhere. <laughs> got to rile them up. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see that on December 16th or whenever mm. it's out. Probably. Well, what would you, if you had a choice how to see it, what would, how would you say it? 2D? Yeah. On my phone. I, <laughs> <laughs> Horizontal. <laughs> a vertical. The vertical portrait yeah. mode, yeah. yeah. You're just switching it during. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. You're, you're leaning. But I'm always slightly behind the action. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, this, this would do well in vertical. And I flip it over and then it's like, oh, no, it's gone. Okay. <laughs> and I have a terrible time. Exactly. And then somebody asked me what I thought of him. I'm like, I don't think it was that good. Actually. Yeah, I should leave him, you know. Yeah. 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 13 years for what? Man. No, you know what? I want to see it on... I want to see it on a petrol pump. Oh yeah! <laughs> Sometimes you get to the petrol pump at the. I don't like the how servo you, and it's you just... walk past them and they they yell at you now the petrol pumps. Yeah. They're like, "Hello, insurance! Hello!" It's a kangaroo yelling at me <laughs> like an animated kangaroo. I don't like it. Well, I want to see ten seconds at a time <laughs> at the petrol pump <laughs> over several years until I've, <laughs> I've you know, yeah. Until, until so it's, it's also... always a different ten seconds when you maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how these things work. So your problem, I guess. Yeah. If they want you to catch Avatar, they need to work around your schedule. That's true, yeah. Of getting petrol once a week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, last bit of news, and I think this leads into, or does lead into, the movie we're going to talk about this week. This is via The Wrap. So they asked Sam Raimi about a Darkman sequel, and he said, Universal is talking about a Darkman sequel. There's a producer attached. I haven't heard the story yet or gone into it. I'm so busy with Doctor Strange, but I think it's cool. Uh, he also asked about Liam Neeson. He said, I don't know if he'd do it, but he'd be incredible. I think he would do it. Yeah, Liam but Mason, what's, yeah. what is interesting about all of that you've just said, all those yeah. words you've said, mm. is it sounds like Sam Raimi is not involved at all. Yes, Huh. It seems that way. Yeah. So there's a, a director called Josh Rubin, and we actually talked. We've done a commentary for the Dark Man. It's just it's up yeah, now. It's up we now, we just right, did it. Yeah. Um, so this is quite coincidental. A movie Mason. you had not seen. No, it turns so. out. But yeah, we talk a bit about like, except on a petrol pump. Obviously, yes, obviously. Yeah. Well, I'm still working my way through it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, there's a director called Josh Rubin who did uh, Werewolves Within. He used to be a college human. He's like, yeah, right. Yeah, so he's up, up and coming and whatever. But um, he's been talking about wanting to do it, so okay. I wonder if like like if someone like him would be involved. I think it'd be really good. But um, but yeah, look if you do want to see our commentary, bigsandwich.co, where we talk That's over right. the movie Dark Man, which I is a, pretty, was a lot of fun, pretty fun time. James, did you have fun? I did have fun actually. Yeah, I kind of wish I could watch it without you fucking yapping in my ear the well, whole you time. Can't. No, that's true. Actually, set a precedent. That's true. That's how I'll I watch all know, my movies James, now. If you, try to, if you try to watch it again, I'll know. <laughs> and I'll just lean in the window and be like, yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, mate, mate, hey, get a. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The time of a multiverse of madness is upon us yet again. Aye. Second time for the year, actually. Right? Second time in as many weeks we have been blessed with a multiversal movie, Mason. Do you think this will be the end of it? No. <laughs> Correct. I think there are going to be so many. Yeah. Uh, forever and always. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or at least I the next three to four is... years. Do you think that we're going to get more and more multiverse stuff? I mean, obviously we are with Marvel. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get more multiversal stuff off the back of these two movies, uh, Doctor Strange and Everything Everywhere All at Once, mm. or just because the pop culture landscape has sort of been primed in the last few years yeah. 
all this sort of stuff. I think like mm. I, I kind of feel like audience like they've gone okay. Well, let's let's have you know connected movies and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then I think people are ready for. Yeah, this I think next producers layer. generally and like overhead creative types are just like yeah, I, th- I think we can do this. We can yeah. Well, it's funny you should say that because on this movie, uh, I saw an interview with one of the writers who was like, well, I saw how in Rick and Morty they can do like a 20-minute episode and introduce the concept of like a new multiverse, explain it to you, and then throw the concept away. Yeah, because everybody died in that could, universe. Or whatever, yeah. Because Rick and or Morty killed everyone. <laughs> yeah. And they've been doing that for like nearly a decade now. That's true, yeah. So I think uh, that informed a lot of like, we don't need to linger on too much what is mm, happening here and we yeah. can kind of speed through it and people will ultimately get it. Yeah. Anyways, we're going to be talking non-spoilers and then spoilers right. for the Multiverse of Madness. I want to do some box office numbers, Mason. Uh-oh. And I'm rolling up my sleeves. Go on. Because this is serious business. Stick big, tough business. I haven't crunched the numbers. That's why I have to roll them up. Yeah, so can you just hold the line for uh, 10 to 15 minutes? We, I mean, we could just pause the recording. Hold the line, please. <laughs> No, okay, so it costs two hundred million dollars. Okay, I'm I'm listening. It's looking to have a one hundred ninety to one hundred ninety four million US opening, which is the ninth to eleventh, depending on okay. biggest opening of all time in the US. Uh, it's also in terms of Marvel movies, in terms of movies, everything. Opening, yeah, uh, it's also going to. I mean, also you got to adjust for inflation. So the mm. biggest movie of all time is still something I can't remember. Well, let's somebody else crunch those numbers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, I can do it. Hold the line, Mason. Oh, my God, he's doing it. (laughs) So they reckon that and coupled with, you know, the international box office, Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be about a $400 million weekend. My goodness. Now, this is, of course, without a Chinese release. Now, Mm. you uh, were telling me about this earlier this week, but there's a reason, well, we think a very specific reason why it doesn't. Oh, was I saying that? Yeah, well, there's the Epoch Times. Oh, uh, right, right, okay, yes. a look in. So, so... In the scene, well, probably presumably a number of scenes in mm. New York, but specifically in the scene in the trailer where uh, Strange is fighting the big squid monster, yeah, uh, there is like a little newspaper box mm. with some Chinese characters. It's yellow and it's got Chinese characters on it. Yeah. And that is a delivery box for the newspaper from the... The Epoch Times. Yes. Yes. Which is a... Uh, it's, it's, a it's an anti-CCP. Yeah, it's an anti-Chinese Communist Party yeah. newspaper, yeah. And we don't know whether that was an intentional kind of Because they are all over the place in New York. Yeah, so. or it's just one of those things where, you know, maybe somebody put it in intentionally. Yeah. but you know, or, or it's like... We need some Chinese characters. <laughs> or I think it, it might have been, it's just we need some. I, it, I mean, something if, on a newsstand. We need, yeah, exactly. We need some. We need. We just need a little, you know, authentic New York flavor, and that's mm. what we. That's what we're going to do. And uh, I wonder maybe, whether maybe that has uh, inflamed some anger. Over yeah, there. I wonder whether that has. Um, that's going to become the norm for Marvel movies because it used to be like we saw with Iron Man three, they're including scenes to get, yeah. you know, to get it a wider release in China. But we recently saw there was a request to get the Statue of Liberty removed from No Way Home, mm-hmm. which didn't end up happening, obviously. And there were I saw also there were levels that they were willing to kind of take it down to 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 re- to have the film released. Right. One was to include less shots of the Statue of Liberty because Liberty, it was too patriotic. Le- less of its face. And yeah, and one was to darken like it in, in certain shots and I think they just went, ah, seems hard. Mm. You know, so we're not going to do it. Anyways, what do you think the story was? Oh, all right. So, Doctor Strange. Yeah. He's, he's, um, he's hanging out. He's loving, he's, he's loving, just doing, he's just loving being strange, you know? Yeah, he is a bit. He's not the Sorcerer Supreme anymore. We knew no. that already. Mm. But, uh, he's just, he's just living large in New York City, mm-hmm. just having regrets and yep. doing magic. That's right. Uh, but then the bloody monster, there's a bunch of, there's bloody monster attacks in New York. What's behind that? What is it? The, well, well, I mean, there's monster attacks and they're after a girl. Yes. America is her name, America Chavez. That's right. She's got a special power. What is it? We'll never tell. I mean, it's in the trailers, right? She's got more. She can. She can. I think anything in the trailers <laughs> we're kind of going to yeah. talk about, but obviously there are some major spoilers, yeah. which we will not be and covering. And if you're familiar here, with that character from, yes. the, from the comic books, uh, she can she can uh, punch her way through multiverses yeah. to, to other uh, parallel universes. I mean, in the comic books she can do it, you know, easy as pie, but... Uh, the America Chavez we see in this movie, yes. uh, not not quite, uh, uh, not quite there, not quite there yet. Yeah, I no. thought she was really good. Uh, her name is Sochi Gomez. Yeah, I thought she was great. Like a, they were a good kind of pairing. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh yeah. So yeah. Doctor Strange, of course, has to figure out um, where are these monsters coming from, what do they want with her, and what will I do about it? Yeah, magic. Yeah, multiverse. Nice. Who's the villain? 
sort of in the trailer, but I guess we can't really we say. Can't, we can't do it. No, we can't do it. Yeah. So, yeah, now, look, I think there has been a mixed reception to this. The people who have sent in their their emails and tweets, are, mm. uh, not all, but there's been a bit of like this, maybe this wasn't what I was expecting. Also, we didn't mention oh, uh, Sam Raimi is directing Oh, and Sam Raimi's directing I mean, people this. would know that, of course, but, you know, Sam, this is this is Sam Raimi's first foray back into superhero stuff since Spider-Man 3. That's right, yeah. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, and so we'll probably get into how, it, precisely how Sam Raimi-ish this movie is. Yeah, mm. we can do a bit of that now, but... So yeah, it, it's definitely, and and I found this going in, but I think I was expecting this after kind of the last few trailers and some comments uh-huh. from like Kevin Feige of, it's not as multiversal as you might think. Yes. It's not like a thousand multiverses and a thousand yeah. cameos, you know, and it is at its core, especially on the back end, it's a very Sam Raimi-esque kind of, yeah. mm-hmm. like, and then obviously you've got your camera moves and whatever, that, which is something, you know, which you recognize from his work, but the introduction of certain characters and certain tropes and, you know, the kind of ghoulish kind of nature of a lot of yeah. this, you know. Uh, it's grubby. It's a bit grubby. It's I colorful, mean, for, a, but it's... for an MCU movie, yeah. I should say. I mean, yeah. I, and I think, you know, something that has arisen over the last couple of days on Twitter as this movie has seen a you know, wider release and more people are seeing it is that a lot of people, I think, have perhaps forgotten how far PG-13 movies are allowed to go. Yeah. Um. Especially Marvel ones, which I think, you know, that, some they're, surprising, they're allowed to have yeah. a PG-13 rating, but I think a lot of, especially Marvel stuff, just doesn't really go, like it, it doesn't go as, as far as it could. And so I think yeah. a lot of people are surprised in this one at, you know, the, the level of... Uh, There's a bit of gore well, in a it. Little gore, a little bit of gore, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think... Yeah, I mean, uh, it was kind of a no f bombs. Is that the? I think that, that was yeah. I think that's still the rule. Yeah. And of course, you know, it's a Sam Raimi movie because Bruce Campbell is in it um, for a bit. Here's a question yeah. for the, for you though: mm-hmm. what do you what do you need going into this? I don't think you need anything. I mean, I think obviously like one division helps. I don't think. Yeah, okay, but here's the thing: I I was thinking about this because a lot of people are like, oh my god, this this is absolutely impenetrable. I don't think it. No, nah. well, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think it is. I think think back to when you were like. 10, if you went to a, com- like a, there wouldn't have been a comic book store, but like a news agent or something, and you picked up a com, like mm. just a random comic book that had this plot in it, yeah. you'd figure it out. Yeah. You'd go, okay, well, there's Doctor Strange, and there's the Scarlet Witch, and they've got magic powers, and they know each other, and then uh, then here's a, here's a situation, and Doctor Strange has to figure out what's going on, and here's some action sequences, and we meet some characters, and you, you get it. Yeah. You know, there's, some, there's some multiversal travel. You wouldn't be like, what? I don't fully. I don't fully understand. I can all these, see but... all. I can see being like, I don't like this. Okay, sure. But I. But yeah, I think you're right in terms of like. I think it does a good enough job to explain the characters' motivations and mm. when what is happening and what is going to happen. You know. Yeah, and I think ultimately it is about you know it is about Strange and America teaming up. Yeah. And and saving themselves from the multiverse. I don't think you mm. necessarily need to understand the. We'll get into it though, and I think yeah. there's some. Uh, there are some questions to do with character, I yeah. think, that uh, that we will have to talk about in spoilers. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But I think that's that's worth getting into. But uh, I don't I don't think you need. I think this does a really good job of just you get in there and you have a fun time. Again, if you know if you are primed to know understand the multiverse, which we all are, yeah. or if you've seen everything everywhere all at once a couple of weeks ago. Yes. This is, I mean, this also. It's not as complicated. as No, that. it's less complicated <laughs> than that. So I think that's you know in this movie we. In in this movie, really, we see sort of a taste of what happens if you tumble through the multiverse, yeah. which I think is probably not even as complicated or as the first Doctor Strange, where remember where he just he has that sort of trip where he tumbles yeah. through various states of consciousness and he sees his his hands his grow hands little, become little, eyes and his, his fingers, eyes or his knees or yeah, whatever, and his, and his fingers grow little hands yeah. and they have fingers and what have you. It's, I don't think it's as weird as that, but I think, yeah, like it's certainly not as weird as in the previous movie we talked, multiversal movie, where mm. there are universes where people have hot dogs for fingers yeah. or they're rocks or what have you. <laughs> you know, there's a there's a you know a couple of there's a, there's a scene which is in the trailer which is that sort of tumble through the multiverse and you see various universes. There's one where everybody's paint and there's a sort of animated thing and there's yeah. some various worlds of you know different technological advancement and what have you, and then they spin out and they end up in the universe that they happen mm. to be in for the next scene or whatever. And it's not, you know, it's not, it's not, you won't be like, I don't understand what's happening. You yeah. get it. I mean, they're, they're really kind of, they kind of rest in, in really a couple of multiverses and then kind of in between spaces, kind of that's kind of where the, mm. the movies kind of takes yeah. place. Do you wish there was more multiversal stuff? 
Because I I think there is something to be said for, and Kevin Feige mentioned this um, specifically, he thought they spoiled too much in the trailers. I think those reveals in the trailers lead to more expectation. And I know I certainly had these going in of more cameos. Oh, right. Okay, and, yeah. and like more worlds. And it's not really that much beyond what we see in the trailer, minus like a couple of pretty significant inclusions. Yeah, right, right. I think those those trailers like have hurt people's perception of this movie. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I don't know. I don't think I really went in. I reckon probably my expectations of this movie were tempered by a lot of probably a lot of the Marvel TV stuff and and yeah. Spider Man No Way Home, where you know a lot of. You know, we we spent weeks and months going, oh, my God, who's going to show up in this next thing? No one. Just, <laughs> just the main cast. Boo. Yeah. Boring. And, no, I, but I think I, I I I don't know. And and maybe that is a case of, like, Spider-Man No Way Home really kicked people's expectations up yeah. to, to expect a huge reveal, but I'm not even sure. I think, though, so, I think, though, there are reveals in this that are bigger than that movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which, again, we will talk about. But I think, yeah, I think those expectations were set so high from Spider-Man and then from these trailers. But I also think that I liked how it kind of went away from that stuff mm. towards the end. I liked that it became more kind of Sam Raimi, grimy, evil, deady yeah. kind of. I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. I wasn't like, oh, man, I would have liked to have seen this person, this person, this person, this person, which I can also understand mm. people like wanting at this point. But, no, I, I, I kind of liked the turn that it took like, yeah. away from that kind mm. of stuff, to be honest. And you know what I loved about this movie? It was restraint, I think, yes. as well, yeah. It's a movie where the main character is a sorcerer and there was some cool magic in it. That's another thing I was going to ask you about because you took uh, great umbrage. I did take great. You, I was just going to say the word umbrage, It was a too. Twitter storm. I was real Dolores umbrage about it. It was. A big racist. Is yes, that right? Yes, <laughs> For I'm wizard going stuff. ham on Twitter. For wizard stuff, though, yes. just to clarify. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you were like, there's just a bunch of firecracker kung fu in this and not yeah. much else in terms of in terms of spells. Yeah, every every spell was just that weird orange grid yeah. and then something would happen with the grid. And I'm like, that's not what... And there's a bunch of weird orange grid spells in this yeah. too. Mm-hmm. Like he does a big buzzsaw. He does a big buzzsaw. That's, that's, good that's fun. cool, sure. But yeah, there is definitely an explora- like a greater exploration of his powers. Mm-hmm. And there's one sequence in particular which is quite musical in nature. Mm. Uh, did you enjoy that? I did moment? enjoy it a lot. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was, I didn't think I was going to yeah but then i'm like no this is cool actually mm. it was very fantasia i thought if, okay if, yeah if you go into this movie expecting evil dead meets fantasia or even you know what spider-man spider-man 2 meets fantasia <laughs> sure you know, yeah. I, think you'll, I think you'll have a fun time yeah no that's some, that's some of the elements that i really enjoyed about that just saying like what else can this guy do and also not explaining everything that he does like you know he'll do a thing and i'm like yeah no, okay you can do that that's fine oh, and sure. also even though I haven't looked up everything that he's done, I just trust that that's probably a thing he's done in the comics. Sure, right. You know what I mean? Because uh-huh. it usually is the case. Wow, he opened a bottle with his eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, he pulled his thumb off with his other hand. Wow. Whoa, and he keeps putting it on and off again. Whoa. Now- his knees are swapping sides. <laughs> Now, there's one thing that I... Uh, and I just lean in. He can do that in the comics. Sorry about that. <laughs> there was actually an element of this which I thought was quite noticeable, and it all went down. It came down to uh, Wong, Wong's hair. Okay. I don't know if you noticed, but his hair changes like scene to scene depending on whether it's a reshoot. There mm-hmm. were significant reshoots in this movie. Um, I got a little information here from Sam Raimi on it. Okay. There's moments where Wong's got like cropped hair, and then uh-huh. the next scene he's got like his hair's like an inch long, okay, and it happens yeah. like a few times throughout mm-hmm. the movie. But he says... Sam Raimi said, I don't actually remember the length of the first cut. It was probably uh, like two hours and 40 minutes, and it slowly came down even though we did the reshoots. We took out material even though the reshoots went in. So it slowly got down to two hours and five minutes. So the reshoots actually took t- like took a bunch of stuff out of this movie. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. to, to, to bring it right down. Um, there's no information at the moment about what in particular, other than Rachel McAdams at one point was going to play three three variants of, okay. um, of her character. Mm-hmm. But and yeah. without spoiling it, it's a different number. Yes, it is a different we can't number. Tell, we can't Well, that's the first thing we'll spoil in spoilers. It's between one and a hundred. That's right. We'll, we'll tell you how many variants of Rachel McAdams' character. <laughs> whose name is Christine, I've just remembered. That's Christine Palmer? I don't know. Yes, that's okay. right. Christine Chicken Palmer. <laughs> so that's good fun. But I think one of the strengths of this movie is, like, there's there's a very significant kind of multiverse moment, which mm. everybody has been talking about. But I think I enjoyed the adventure around that just as much for the most part. Like, because a lot of this is like 
a shape. You, they're being like pursued mm. through various dimensions and sometimes just corridors or magical hallways <laughs> sure, or whatever. Yeah. And sometimes New York City, baby. Yeah, and using magic to keep like one step ahead of this like thing that's chasing them. Mm. And I, I just, I really enjoyed that element yeah. of it. I just saying like, you know, what happens if you use the mirror dimension as a, as like a trap, basically. It's just like a, you yeah, know, right. what if it's just like a bear trap that locks you into it, you yeah, know? And I mean, to go back to like, you know, just a comic book where maybe some characters go through the multiverse, yeah. I think they're, I wouldn't read that and they got some characters go to a, a, a particular alternate universe and see maybe some, some characters we slightly different designs of characters from their universe or whatever. I wouldn't be like, my enjoyment of this comic book hinges yeah. on those characters from that universe mm. and how they look and their new designs. I know? guess but the difference here is though when you're bringing in actors, you've got a history of other movies mm. and you've got like certain actors that might be involved. So I think that changes your perception of a Not story. Mine. Not yours. No. Okay, fair enough. Guess I'm built yeah. different. But I think also I think people who are upset about there not being more multiverse stuff in it, mm. I think that's a pretty valid complaint. Like seeing as how they kind of presented this movie and what we've what's come before it. I think a lot of that is expectation of like, yeah. oh my god, Tom Cruise is going to fly in his Iron Man and whatever. That doesn't happen. Uh, is that a spoiler? Or he <laughs> does. We'll tell you. <laughs> the second thing we'll tell you yeah. is whether Tom Cruise flies in his Iron Man and how many versions of him there are. I think there is like a you know manager expectation. He flies <laughs> in from his character's cocktail. <laughs> his character cocktail. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> I think it's oh cocktail. Yeah. It's his name. That's right. I think it's um. I think it's, you know, I, I think that's uh, some of that is justified and some of it is like you need to kind of keep your expectations mm. in check, you know, because, again, they presented a lot of stuff of like what was going to be in it and they delivered like slightly more than what we, you know, they say. I mean, it is not, I'm not sure I would describe this adventure as a multiverse of madness. No, I don't agree with that, yeah. There are, there are I think, certain scenes where characters whoever they might be, might be in the grip of madness. Mm. But I don't feel like anybody, I don't think anybody who was, you know, bouncing between parallel universes was like, I'm going mad from this. Yeah. It was more a case of like, let's solve this little puzzle. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, we'll yeah. go to the next universe. Doctor Strange solves a series of little puzzles. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, should we do some spoilers? Yes, I'm going to say best movie ever. Me too. Um, yeah, I mean, if, but, it, but also I feel like if they did just, if this... I, and I, I feel like they're building towards something. I don't. Maybe they don't even know what this phase is going to be I've, yet. But I've got a, some idea. I feel like maybe. if they just, if they tossed in a thousand parallel universes in this one, yeah, and just cameo after cameo, where do you go? Where do you go from there? You yeah, know? you're right. Just everybody settle down. I'll say it now. I guess I think they're probably going to do Secret Wars. I think that's what they're doing, and different versions of different people from whatever, and that's what I think they're doing. Okay, I don't know that. Right, but at the same time. You heard it here first. Whoa. Spoilers, Mason? Yes. Are you going to say best movie? Yes, I, I really liked it. And yeah. I think, I again, I understand why people wouldn't, but the, the elements of this movie for me, uh, my enjoyment of it didn't hinge on, like, you know, seeing how, um, as many cameos as possible. Mm, yeah. Like, I think if it was just that movie, I probably would have been like, that was really cool seeing sure. those people, but also, mm. like, what else is there to this movie? Yeah. And I think there's more the, to it than just the handful of cameos that we do get. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, yeah. Do we know if Sam Raimi was required? We're not in spoilers yet. Mm. Do we know if Sam Raimi was required by the studio to put in a certain number of cameos? Or? I don't know, no. Yeah, right. I'd, I'd say probably. I know Scott yeah. Derrickson, who worked on the first one, left for, like, creative reasons. I don't know. I think he wanted to take it in a more horror kind uh -huh. of element. And yeah. I know, but, but then also the rumour was that, or the thinking was, well, because Marvel wants to put a bunch of cameos in and he disagree with that. But that's not what this is. So I'd be curious to know, like, what was the kind of – Yeah. What mm -hmm. caused them to kind yeah. of part ways. Anyway, if you're on the fence, folks, uh, I think you should see it. But, again, temper your expectations. Imagine this is like a phase one Marvel movie. Oh, I think it's a bit beyond No, that. I mean, yeah. but in the sense that, like, they didn't rely on oh, like, cameos yeah, and, okay, and yeah. who's going to be in it next and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Just, Just – Remember, this is just a st it's a it's just a story. It's an yeah. it's a fun adventure story, and it's a bit gross, and it was fun, and you know the characters all work well together, and yeah. etc. So great stuff, you know. Spoilers, okay. Anyway, wait, uh, okay. Oh. So the Rachel McAdams, there's one version of her character. That's right. Wait, no, there's two. There's two. Yes, there's two. There's two. <laughs> I thought you were joking then. No. I thought you were doing a big joke. Mm. 
Uh, and Wanda is the yeah, villain. Specifically, there's there's the main universe one. Yeah, and there's an alternate universe one. Who's it's got like a hair. multiversal. Uh, yeah, a doctor of multiversal theory or whatever it is. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Mm, yeah, and she's got red hair. Yeah. So Wanda Maximoff is the main villain in this. Yes. So the idea is that off the back of the uh, WandaVision series, mm-hmm. she wants to travel to another multiverse where her kids exist because they don't exist in the main MCU timeline. Exactly. Kill the Wanda in that universe yeah. and mm-hmm. and take over that that universe. Now, so but in order to do that, she needs to. She wants she she wants to find and kill America Chavez and take her power. Yeah. So she can instead instead of relying on her to transport her to a particular universe, she wants to have the power at all times in order to if if her kids if her kid if if, if the kids she abducts get yes. sick or whatever, she can go to another parallel universe where where the cure exists or what have you. Yeah. And so that's why she's after America Chavez. Now this this reveal happens quite early on. I think. Yeah, this is, it does. This is like an Act One reveal because and it's in it's. Pretty much in the trailers as and it's, well. Yeah. And it's immediate, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah. It's, it's Doctor Strange goes to uh, Wanda for help, and then he's like, oh, wait, you're the bad guy. And she's yeah. like, I am the bad guy. And he's yeah. like, oh, no. I'm right here. I, oh, <laughs> oh, boy. I thought it was interesting the way that they deal with multiverses. And basically now in the Marvel Universe, if you have a dream, that is a version of you that is experiencing that thing in at this at, i guess at that moment in another multiverse mm. and there could so whatever bizarre dream you've ever had there's a version of you having that experience well now we're gonna have to go through every mcu movie and tv show and find all the points where characters had dreams and figure out what's going i mean well tony stark's like whole thing is like he had a vision about a, fu- a future where aliens invade yeah and maybe that was from a dimension where that happened oh, and they right. lost you know what mm. i mean or it could be, you know, he's having nightmares in Iron Man three about he killed everybody PTSD. Yeah, right. And maybe, you know, maybe that's all to do with it. I, I'm okay. not sure. But I thought it was interesting where it kind of, you can kind of infer what happened with Wonder Vision and where her children came from because in the so we also know the MCU timeline is called the six one six timeline. Well, yeah. according to the three four eight timeline or whatever the one the other one is they go to, but. She created her kids out of nothing, yeah. and I guess she created them because she had dreamt about them from another universe oh, and see. built that house, which looks very similar to the house. Oh, so they are this. real children in the other universe. They're real in the other universes, and she had like she had maybe subconsciously or consciously dreamt of them and was able to recreate mm. them in, yeah, right. in the in the regular. Now, here's reality. the question, and people have been debating this online: Is this character assassination? Okay, uh, I, mm, I get, here's the thing. Where did we when we left her? Yeah, was it at the end of WandaVision or is it something else? I think it was the end of WandaVision. She just released everybody from the town, and then she is in a cabin. Yeah, and she is astral projecting, and she's also reading stuff out of the dark hold, or the stuff outside is not real, and she's reading the dark hold, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, but I kind of feel like that was supposed to be a portent for stuff to come. Like, I didn't look at that and go, oh, she's going to be an even better superhero now. She can do all this stuff and read from yeah, the dark Yeah, no, it seemed hold. very ominous. Yeah. And, so, and I think mm. a lot of people are saying, well, she learned a valuable lesson from WandaVision and now she should be a good guy. Why is she a bad guy again? I don't think she did learn a lesson, yeah, I don't really. She, I think she, she was – what I got from that is she's a bad person and she walked away. Yeah. That's what I got from it. And, like, a lot of people in that are lucky they're not dead. And mm. it's strange that also – strange – Oh, that, that's the name of the movie. Like the, the biggest jarring part for me is like she she like spent a movie kind of zapping people at an airport, and and now she's like traveling through dimensions trying to murder children. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's got like that. Like I think that's a, <laughs> a bizarre like turn of events, but I don't necessarily think it's character assassination. And mm. I know it also speaks to like the comics, which isn't yeah. an excuse for like doing anything, I guess. But she's not a. She's not an all good character in the comics no. either. And also in the comic books, whenever they need a sort of large, you know, universe spanning event to happen, oftentimes they just go, Hey, Wanda's going crazy again. <laughs> Wanda's going crazy again. What's she going to do this time? Yeah. Is she going to get rid of all yeah. the mutants? Is she going to make more mutants? The Phoenix Force just went crazy yeah. and that's over. So we need another woman to go crazy. Crazy, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. 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 So, I mean, I guess that is the larger question to, to be discussed. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I also like that they. Made a hero a villain, yeah. You know, yeah. And again, if and again, it it is that case of like, okay, well, if they want to do a season two of WandaVision, mm. or if they want to reincorporate her into the movies again as a hero, 
They can just say the dark hole made her evil. The dark hole did it. There is always a way around these things, you know. Just grab another one from another dimension. Um, I mean, she did kill a lot of innocent people, I think. But uh, yeah, but not in the regular dimension. Oh, oh no, that's not true. She killed a bunch of wizards, didn't she? Yep. And that weird wizard fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of other dimensions, the significant one which people are talking about. I've got I actually wrote it here. It's Earth eight three eight, according to them. That is the that is the you go on red universe. Yes. Okay, great. That's right. So, yeah. Can you imagine such a place, James? I, I can't. can't. Oh, luckily, they had it on screen because I wouldn't have been able to visually yeah. interpret what was happening. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But no, here's what I am saying, Mason. Go on. They introduced a version of the Illuminati. They don't have the event. They don't have the Avengers. they got a pack of nerds right? running things. Mm-hmm. And I recently said in a video that, like, I love watching a pack of nerds get wrecked. And, boy. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like a council of nerds, I should say, not just like bullies picking on, mm. <laughs> you know, nerds. But so we got we got Baron Mordo, who basically may as well be regular Baron Mordo. Yeah, you sure. know, he's he's essentially the exact same character. Regular Baron Mordo, we don't know what he's up to. The last thing we saw, he stole Benjamin Bratt's walking legs powers and. And when I'm yeah, you know, right. going to do this mm. for a bit, yeah, uh, we got Captain Marvel, but it's the Maria Rambo version. Presumably because she was in the accident. Uh, we got Captain Carter, Peggy Carter. We got Patrick Stewart as Professor X. Now those ones had all been revealed in the trailers. Yes, and it's. I guess it's. Uh, we should stress that like the Professor X version is not the one that from the movies. Yes, normally. Mm. I mean, it, it looks like him. Sure does. <laughs> but he's got the big. We did a video on this, but he's, yeah, got a, yeah. he's got a big chair. He's got the big, he's got the big levitating wheelchair, the big golden wheelchair. Mm. So he is, he is more akin to the the animated version. Yeah, and his his psychic powers have like visible effects, whoa, 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 which whoa. the other ones don't. Exactly. Uh, actually, Patrick Stewart talked about returning again. He said it's possible and likely that there will be even more appearances. I don't expect ever to be Jean Luc Picard again, but there is potential maybe for a reappearance of Professor Xavier. Well, I think when they do. Introduce mutants. They're going to recast him, mm. but I think yeah, he could turn up again. Yeah. Now, in and in our uh, audience, mm. when the uh, when all the reveals happened, yeah, the biggest reveal was for Mister Fantastic, probably. The oh, biggest, oh, so the yeah. biggest cheer I think was for Mister. Not Fantastic. for me. That wasn't my biggest cheer. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So they've cast your biggest cheer was when it was over the whole movie because I had such a good time, yeah. Mason. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, so John Krasinski turns up looking exactly like all of the fan arts yeah. version of, of Reed Richards. Yeah, down to the costume and the logo, it's I think. Pretty, yeah. yeah, dead on to all of that. There was a moment where I saw him where he was, like, looking at Doctor Strange and it felt like he wasn't looking at him and I'm like, mm-hmm. did they just shoot all this in different rooms? Maybe, like, yeah. maybe they did. Yeah. What do you think about that casting, though? Ah, uh, well, I mean, I, I wonder, like, is it because they would have... It, has the fan casting always been because you would get Krasinski and Emily Blunt together and they would probably be a pretty good it's part of it, I would say? He didn't come across Reed as Richardson mean, mean enough? Mean and smart enough. I don't know. Well, he know. was certainly a dumb guy. Yeah. <laughs> He seemed more like a... They introduced him as the smartest man in the world. That's but, true. Yeah, and then but... he gets Swiss cheese. Or he gets string cheesed, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I always see I that's a good question. And it's also based on the everybody's assumption of what that character is like. I don't particularly see Reed Richards as mean necessarily. I f- more direct. Mm, I feel like he's mo I mean it dep- and it also depends on what like Fantastic Four comics you have read in yeah. your life. I kind of feel like he is like a nice family man, but he can be quite aloof or distracted because he's always got bigger stuff on his mind kind of thing. Stretching. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like, it's a well, metaphor. Like, I could sit down for, for dinner with my family, but I've got to do all this stretching. I've <laughs> <laughs> got to do this dance. got to say limber. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, he did get killed very, very easily. Certainly did, didn't he? Yeah, I, I mean, I, look, personally, mm-hmm. I would have liked to have seen Jon Griffith reappear. Oh, right, yeah. Because that way, like, there's no expectation that he's going to come back. Yeah, right. Because I right. think there is an expect, expectation here that he's going to be well, didn't I even Didn't we even see, I think maybe I saw a tweet earlier, and maybe it was from one of those Twitter feeds that always lies, but I think it was like, he's confirmed for... Yeah, I, that's not surprising to me at all. Yeah. But don't you think it would have been interesting if it was Yon Griffith? Yes. Because they, well, I guess they do take a big swing here of a character of, of a, in a franchise that people didn't like. But, I, I but mean, just, just, just before we get to that, I think, and we mentioned this in the video we did, but I think it's interesting, uh, you pointed out that 
when Doctor Strange meets Reed Richards, mm. he says to him, "Weren't you incinerated in the?" 60s, I got that right? wrong. He he says, um, he, "I thought he said." Did, didn't you get charred in the 60s? But okay. he said, Did, didn't you chart in the 60s? Oh, so I, I think see, it was just right. like, you're a guy in a 60s band, Fantastic Four. Oh, I you see, know that's I mean? fun. Okay, yeah. right. But I also think it could be a nod to like, he was a guy that existed in the, in the 60s. 60s. I don't right. think that necessarily like negates that he might have recognized who that was. Okay. You know, but it's interesting, I guess, that there's no Iron Man, there's no Hulk, there's no Thor. Yeah. Like, it's just a. Is that because they died in the in, while battling Thanos? Oh, we d- I don't know. They 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 weren't there when mm. we saw that, so we we don't really know. Yeah. But yeah, like no Spider Man either. And what's the deal with that? Because Doctor Strange remembers Spider Man, but America Chavez doesn't know Spider Man at all. Mm-hmm. And is that a result of the Spider Man spell and people not remembering Peter Parker or the seventy odd dimensions she'd been to? Had they not yet? I think all the, a, they didn't have a Spider Man. Yeah, maybe they all died of radiation poisoning. Cool, that's cool. That is cool. Yeah, uh, but of course the last uh, <laughs> unbelievable. The last, the the, the most mind blowing appearance to me was who is strictly speaking, he is in the Illuminati in the comic book. He is, yeah, which makes sense to why they put him in here. But the casting is incredible. So Black Agar Boltagon, yes, the, uh, the King of the Inhumans, mm-hmm. as played by Anson Mount, yeah. who played him in that. Horrible TV series. Yes, not not his fault. Mm-hmm. Chill. I I'm gonna talk about it a bit later, but I watched the new Star Trek, Brave New Worlds or whatever, and you know he's good in that and mm-hmm. other things. But when I that was like because I'd heard rumblings, I hadn't seen the pictures, but I'd heard mm-hmm. or I'd seen like Mister Fantastic maybe trending, and I'm like, okay, what's that about or whatever. <laughs> so I was kind of like semi expecting it, I guess. Yeah, right. But that one was just like, wow, really? Yeah. That wow, like that yeah. really like. <laughs> That shook me to my core, yeah, Mason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In a good way, though. I just thought it was really just the, uh, they just acknowledged it, and they went with comic <laughs> accurate costume with yeah. the little tuning fork on his head. Amazing. Yeah. And then they killed them all in very graphic oh, ways. So good. Right. <laughs> I know, right? So I wonder: do people, at, uh, people generally speaking, enjoy that scene? Because again. It is, to the best of our knowledge, an infinite multiverse. Yeah, who cares? So you can knock off as many of those guys as you Doesn't want. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Doesn't matter at all. Mm. I also liked how it was kind of, as, you know, Wanda is like killing all these people, mm. it cuts to Doctor Strange just having like a fist fight. And yeah. I'm like, oh, he can fist fight. Good. You would. You'd, you'd learn. Because maybe someone puts a magic talisman on you and you well, can't. you learn all the kung fu. Exactly, yeah. That's the yeah. first one. Oh, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. But I like that he can still do it. Yeah, you right, know? right. He can well, fight. We recently, for our Big Sandwich Classic Comic Book oh, Club. very good. Our comic book podcast, we talked about Doctor Strange, The Oath. Yeah. And in that comic book, there is a sequence where two men, they, 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 they were going to battle magically. Doctor Strange expects a magical battle, but mm. instead a, a little hourglass is yeah. turned that... Uh, means that anybody within a certain radius can't use any magic, so it has to be just a fist fight. Mm. And uh, it is Doctor Strange is just good at fist fighting. It turns is, out, yeah, yeah. So and that, that was shades of that in the yeah. In the, and in the he's movie, probably got metal in his hands, which helps. Yeah, I'd sure. imagine yeah. to hurt the other people and you. <laughs> I don't when you when you hit that, but just like that first death of like Black Bolt's head, like blowing out the back of his yeah. head. Just yeah. Really good stuff, and then from there you get Reed Richards gets like shredded, and then his head pops at the very end, and then it's, mm-hmm. and then you see like, like Peggy Carter just run off, like right, like, <laughs> like dart to the side, like oh no, you know, and she lasts like longer than you know you'd expect, but yeah, I thought that was really great, you mm-hmm. know, yeah, and she gets cut in half it seems, seems by the way, shield, yeah. yeah, and then Monica Monica Rambo, yeah, gets smashed by a big statue, and that's Maria fun. Rambo, Maria Rambo. Maria Rambo. <laughs> Their name shouldn't be so similar. I don't I like it. I don't like it. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, I just thought what a what a what a fun sequence. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Other fun sequences, obviously the mag- the the music magic fight. Yeah, absolutely. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah, mm. I completely agree. Oh, we didn't even talk about uh, we haven't we haven't talked about the other strangers. Oh yeah, so there's so there's two. It's true. Yes. Well, there's three. There's one we sort of see from the from the weird Illuminati dimension. Mm-hmm. We use the dark hold, and as a result, he corrupted himself. But he was like, "I'm going to use this to stop Thanos, and then you can kill me because mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to do any of this stuff." Yes. There's regular Strange, mm-hmm. and then there's Ponytail Strange. Yes. Who is also Zombie Strange. Yeah. But uh, then there's another Strange. Who's the other Strange? The guy with the third eye guy. Remember oh yeah, guy? and then there's Dark Dark Man Strange. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. So there's four. Mm-hmm. You're right. Yeah. yeah. I completely forgot about that one. Who's not the version from the What If? No, he's a different dimension. guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean that 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 
the the point the when we go to that guy's universe, that's really the closest we get to a multiverse of madness. But it's really it's just that guy in his own universe, and he's gone mad. It's a spooky, spooky, spooky time. So yeah, but other than that, Doctor yeah. Strange's spooky joint. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I I th- honestly thought that that like there was going to be a moment towards the end where. Because they bury the zombie version of Strange in the mm-hmm. regular universe. I thought it's going to be Doctor Strange fighting a zombie. But I like how they twisted it where Same. Doctor Tra- Strange had to use the body of a zombie to fight it Wanda. It all tied together. I thought that was very fun. What I thought was interesting is that both this movie and everything, everywhere, all at once, both have a mechanic where you can enter the mind of a of a body, in an, of your own body in another dimension. Yeah. And I think it's just because they need a way to say, okay, there's a villain on the way. Yeah. And look out, look out, exactly. <laughs> oh, but you know the idea being obvious. If if the if the villain can just jump into the next multiverse or the next the next parallel universe, it's all over pretty quickly. So you have to introduce yeah. an element of like, well, yeah, they can they can surveil, yeah, exactly, this particular power. So in, in for a time, for a time in mm. the in the uh, in the in this movie, it's the Darkhold. Obviously, the spell has that. Mm. The, the the Darkhold has that particular spell. And in everything, everywhere, it's a it's a mystical RV, <laughs> a highly technological <laughs> RV. Rather, you put on a headset or put whatever headset, and some Bluetooth. That, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but um, I also also that Wong was great in this. So I was kind of like, are they going to kill Wong in this? Like, it's probably mm-hmm. yeah, and they didn't, which yeah. I appreciated because I I like that character. But um, I thought also there was a bunch of like strange. <laughs> implications that kind of Do you say a different word, a, a queer. Bizarre. Okay. Out of sorts. Peculiar. Peculiar, yeah. Implications for like what's what does this mean for like the greater universe, okay. right? Uh, so for one, it seems that when you skip dimensions, your physical properties change. So if you go into a weird paint dimension, you turn into paint. Turn to paint, you go to a cartoon world, you're a cartoon. Mm. Which could mean that Peggy Carter is the one from the What If series. It could also mean Professor X is the animated Professor X, but he's just come into this universe. That is true and also. He's, yeah. And he's turned into Patrick Stewart. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Also, there's a moment where Doctor Strange meets his former uh, doctor who's a doctor with him. Mm. And he says... Mr. Doctor. Mr. Doctor. Excuse me, sir. Uh, we haven't even mentioned... <laughs> what's the name of that guy? The one, Maybe that you're about to talk about this guy. The guy who's those old doctor mates. Yeah. Yeah, so he gets like an and he's on the poster that guy. Yeah. So he gets an and whatever the guy's name is on the cuz he's in the first one, right? He's also in the oath. Yeah. Yeah. Uh which I won't spoil that comic here, but yeah, he's a rival doctor to Doctor Strange mm. and he's the one who operates on his hands. Yeah. And Doctor Strange is like, you, su- you suck at this. Mm. I'm oh, I guess I actually do suck at this. Sorry. <laughs> I admit it. I but got did me. he get He must have had like he must have signed on for the first one and it was a case of I'm gonna, I have to be on the poster. And you get a title credit and a poster credit on the second one. Yeah. Because he's in it for five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. Not What's even na- five minutes. What is his name? Let me bring that up. His name's Michael Stahlberg. There nice. you go. So, yeah. So he's Nicodemus West, I yep. want to say. Uh-huh. So I, I guess I'm going to spoil the oath here. Okay, great. Uh, but you should read the oath. In James, that, moments ago you said you weren't going to spoil Now I have oath. to to explain this okay, scenario. Right. So are they building up to... That guy attempting to kill Strange. Maybe. Because in that comic, he hires an assassin to shoot Strange with Hitler's gun. That's true. So are they going, is that where we're going here? Mm. Uh, and the other thing is, so are they going to do death? A gun which presumably has done roughly equal amounts of harm and good. <laughs> That's true also. Because he shot himself with it. <laughs> but also, as a result of Strange being. Do you think Hitler like killed people individually? No. Nah, killed I some don't guys? Think so. Yeah. Do you reckon he would? No, nah, probably not. I've seen the title. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Also, so Doctor Strange also in the comics is currently dead. Ah. So I wonder if that guy would have anything to do with Doctor Strange being killed and then Clea taking over, who, of course, makes an appearance Ooh. in this movie. But the other thing is he asked Doctor Strange, like, of all the scenarios that you ran through your head of, like, how to defeat Thanos, was that the one that, like, worked? Yeah. And Doctor Strange was like, yes. Mm-hmm. And this movie had me thinking that maybe there was a scenario where Doctor Strange could sacrifice himself and he chose not to do that one. He chose to go with the Iron Man sacrifice yeah, right, himself. Uh-huh. Everybody snapped and disappeared. Yeah, okay. So it made me think the way that he kind of responded to that made me think that he made a somewhat selfish choice to keep himself alive yeah, right. in the universe. Maybe. And that guy's mad about his cats or whatever mm. he, was talking, he was talking about, yeah. Also, Ultron. Um, who's, <laughs> who did that? Who built Ultron? Probably was Ultron. That, was that previously evil Ultron? 
and they turn him good, or was this a universe where Ultron's good and servient? Oh, good question. Yeah. You know who I thought might make an appearance if we're talking cameos? Ultron? No, Vision. Oh, yeah. I thought maybe I, if, if there was going to be a big reveal at the end, I thought perhaps it was going to be when – look, also, first of all, one of, the, one, one of the things that I did really like was that it – I mean, it did end literally with a bunch of punches, but, <laughs> but they weren't punches to knock Wanda's head off. Yeah. America figures out – her, her powers, and she punches Wanda into back into the universe where her, her children are alive, and and yeah. the other Wanda is there, and that Wanda says that the children will be loved, so it's okay, mm. you know, you, you can't be here, but etc. And I thought that was nice that it wasn't just yeah. somebody getting their head twisted off or whatever. <laughs> Though that does happen, that does happen. <laughs> um, but I thought in that moment there might have been a, a, a point where like uh, Vision comes down the stairs, or yeah, whatever, you know, and he's like, "Hello, hello, it's me, Vision. Hello, I'm not." Uh, your version's extra dead. How did these kids? How did this happen? Right. We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really think about that during the movie, but yeah, it's kind of surprising that they didn't put him in, and we know he's out there. Like, yeah, there's the version that she made, which dissolved, and then the original version, with the white-bodied Vision, yeah, who's just. But also, off. maybe it was a case of if you if you bring Vision into this in, into the final scene, then the, the scene just keeps going because then Wanda. Would, yeah, that's true. Have a long conversation and with this guy and it's back to the punches. Yeah. So if we just assume he's also dead in that universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It saves a lot of time. I thought the uh so the, he kind of uses a bunch of ghoul ghost things as like a cape. And it also was like that Doctor Strange multi-arm kind of thing, but it was all yeah, zombie right, right. ghoul thing. Did that whole thing about those screaming demons felt very kind of Evil Dead, Evil Dead and mm-hmm, yeah. horrible little monsters screaming Again, that's, at you. that's everything that's in Sam Raimi's head all the time. <laughs> that's so. right. Exactly. And I guess my last thought is like if – so if, if all dreams are real yes. and you have a dream about Star Wars, mm-hmm. does that mean the Star Wars dimension exists? No, that's just an alternate universe in which you're playing Star Wars. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm playing it. You've got all the action figures. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay yeah. That's fine. That's, a, the uni- that's the multiverse – that's the universe you wish you lived in, which is where you collected <laughs> all the Star Wars toys. <laughs> Oh man! Imagine. And you're alone, but you have all the toys. Oh, cool! Wow! <laughs> Those are the entire universe has collapsed in on itself, yeah. and it's just me being like, "Yeah, I'm the Skywalker." Okay. <laughs> but it also would mean that, like, so the Tobey Maguire universe is real. We know that. Yes. And he mentions, and there's the mention of Superman in that universe. Oh. So does that mean Superman exists in the Marvel universe in another dimension? Maybe. Probably, I guess. Unless it's just, I, no, it's it's probably just there are Superman comics in the in the in the in the Raimi Spider Man universe. It's probably just Superman. comics. Okay, Mason. Yeah, fine. that's right. I've ruined it. I I've guess. ruined your fun. Fine, I guess. Yeah, but mark my words. As soon as these companies start running out of money, they're going to merge they're universes. Merge. Maybe, oh, maybe not even. Maybe yeah. they'll just do it do it yeah. anyway. Mm. And that's fun, isn't it? It is fun. Yeah. Do you have any more thoughts about this movie? Um. Well, we can do the post credits. So Charlie okay, Theron shows yeah, up. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, pretty good. Oh yeah. Oh, here's the thought. Yes. This was not in the, the post credits or, in fact, anywhere. But in the comic books, the there's a, there's a spell in the Darkhold mm. uh, that destroyed all the vampires. Oh, yeah. And when and, – and, and if the, the, the spell uh, is, is destroyed, all the vampires come back. Yeah. Or if the spell is, is, is reversed. Yeah. And I think if you destroy the Darkhold, it reverses all the spells or like cast. Or like the weird kind of – like Waller was written on. Yes, and all exactly. The yeah. Come back. Yeah. So I think I think the destruction. If they if they if they we are getting a blade yeah. movie. I think they're probably going to be like the reason there were no vampires for a while is because the Darkhold was. But then that so, book fell over. Then the book fell over, <laughs> and then now the all the vampires. Because the are other back. book, there was yeah, a second yeah. book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Now, the, now the anyway, that's that's my theory. That's interesting. Which is you know like a lot of these phase theories is like. It, who knows what's who knows, like maybe it, it might be true now, but if uh, if somebody gets a better idea, they might rewrite it into something else, or it might it might not be true now, and somebody's yeah. like, hey, remember the thing with the dark hold and the vampires, mm. whatever? Let's write it in, whatever. So, what do you think happened to Wanda? The thing just fell on her, and she went, oh no, and then it was over. She was sad, and the building collapsed on her. She's gonna lie there for a bit until yeah, they I meet her. She's probably gonna lie there for a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She'll probably be a statue. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. When they when they when they return to that bit, let's see what's up. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, do we talk about where this phase is going? Maybe or what? Yeah. Are the, what the various artifacts? I think this, are... what this is what I want to talk about the post credits. So okay. Clea, it's Charlie Theron turns up and she's like, Doctor Strange, you you really did a big multiverse, and now you mm. need to help me. Yeah. 
I do think that that, and I think Clear had something to do with the Secret Wars, right? The the most recent one. No, no, one of them. I don't know. Maybe the first one. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember. One I don't of think them. it was the first one. Okay, was it, maybe it's maybe I'm wrong. Mm. But so, what Secret Wars? What do, what's well, the original Secret Wars was a was an alien being called the Beyonder. Yep, just grabbed a bunch of heroes and villains uh, from from the Marvel universe and took them to a planet called Battle World and made them fight. Yep, like other stuff and each other and what have you. Uh, but it was basically a it was a um, it was a big exercise in like selling toys. Yeah, okay. That's what ultimately yeah, yeah. it was it was just a it was just a very uh, it was just a way to strip away all the nonsense from all the all the all the like. It was a way to strip away like all the personal details from all the heroes and just have them as like action figures fighting each other on a in an empty world, really. Okay, yeah. Well, it did. We have read that. We also com- yeah. covered that for Big Sandwich. Comic, and then there was the second book one, book which I think had the Beyond of Coming to Earth, and then there was a modern day one, it's like a twenty fifteen one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I think had a bunch of multiversal people. Yeah, there was. It was various characters from. Alternate versions of various characters from multiver- from the mul- the Marvel comic book multiverse, mm. all together on one world fighting. Anyways, that's what I think they're doing. Interesting. Yeah, I think that's when we're going to get a million cameos. Yeah, right. Yeah. What do you think, though? Great question. More music fights. Yeah, more music fights. Mm. I don't know. I'm I I I'm wondering like because we we do have some more artifacts. Yeah. I don't think we had. A, do we have an artifact in this? Not really. I mean, a couple of books. There were a couple of books. Yeah. No, I don't care. They're more books, really. Books. Yeah, yeah. But we had the Ten Rings, obviously, from Shang-Chi. That's true, yeah. And Ms. Marvel's powers seem to be coming from some sort of bracelet kind mm. of device. Yeah. I'm wondering if... Those are connected. Those are connected. Are they Kree things or something? Maybe. Actually, no, Captain Marvel said that the Ten Rings aren't Kree. Yeah. Didn't she? Because mm. she's in a post-credits. Yeah. And she's like, I've got that haircut. Yeah, nice. All right, anyway, we're still talking post-credits. Yeah, uh, but so, what do you think about Charlie Theron being like, "Hello, I'm here, and I'm <laughs> I'm going to be your new girlfriend in a bit, and then if in a movie or two. Yeah, great. You know what I mean? Yep, fun. Solving. She's from the Dark Dimension. I did a video on it, but mm. um, yeah, it didn't feel like a super exciting, like kind of like post credits to me. There's also the Bruce Campbell one after, of course. But you made a good point about oh, this the, sounds like me. It's very Sam Raimi. Where so the last scene of the film is the third eye opens on his head, which the evil Doctor Strange had. And he's like, ah, ah, and then there's post credits, and he's just like, it's fine. Yeah, life's so, fine. I've, I've got used to this, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was just fun. Yeah, yeah. Would you like to see Sam Raimi do another one of these? Because I would. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I think I've seen some people like think that these movies have kind of grown beyond what Sam Raimi does, but I don't. I don't think disagree. that at all. I thought he was a great choice for this. Yeah, yeah especially considering that they lost a director and they got yeah. him to do it. I like, would. I, I mean, amazing. you know, time will tell. But I'm. I'm wondering what the critical consensus on this will be in six months. I think it will be largely positive. Okay, then. There you go. What is it on a Rotten Tomato? It's well, on seventy-five percent. Cinema score. It's like B plus. Okay. Which is quite low for That's low, Marvel. isn't it? Because they for love Marvel everything. movies, yeah. it's all A plus all the time. The the only thing lower it's on par with something, but the only thing lower is Eternals, which is a B. Okay, fair mm. enough. Well this has got an eighty seven percent audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. Pretty but you know good. who you know who votes on Rotten Tomatoes in the audience score? Actual tomatoes? Psychopaths myself. Oh no. No, if you do that, we appreciate your discourse. <laughs> like this is normal, doing this. Right. Me, me judging others for ra- for rating a movie. <laughs> Ridiculous. Speaking of, though, we've got some tweets here from people oh, who yes, have written in. This is from Molotov Shrimp Cocktail who says, Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod, just finished Professor Weird and the cameos of Calamity. Uh-oh. Got to say that there was the most Sam Raimi film I've ever seen, and I'm not bothered. Interested to see where they go with this. Best movie ever. Kudos to Elfman and Raimi making literal magic. Oh, yeah, we forgot to mention, but Danny Elfman, of course, does the, uh, the score in this. Mm. That's cool. Uh, Eli says, I've seen a lot of people complaining about the cameos in Doctor Strange 2, even Stranger, but I was very relieved that it wasn't wall-to-wall with cameos and fan casting. It would have felt like a clip show. And Strangers in a Strange Land says, saw Doctor Strange, spoilers, was kind of peeved that they introduced so many great characters and then immediately killed them all. (laughs) Anyways, best movie ever. (laughs) I love that. The Average Pixel says, spoilers, saw Doctor Strange 2, mixed bag. Some nice Mm. reveals, such as who was in the Illuminati, Zombie Strange was fun. However, poor pacing and a very cliche and very cliche moments. Believe in yourself and your powers work. Yeah, that's a fair point, I guess. Some of the dialogue was a little clunky. Yeah, I'll certainly yeah. give it that. And also, guitar screeching when third eye opens. Just a movie. I liked the guitar screeching. Mm. I thought that was good. And Broderick Henry said, "Haven't seen Madness yet. I, I heard, but I heard it was good. Heard it was good. Yeah. Well, 
There you go. There you go. Get out there if you haven't seen it. Get out there. Interested. But yeah. Uh, if you don't have any thoughts, uh, leave them wherever you want. And we'll move on to the next segment of the show, won't we? Right, Mason? I'm on a toilet wall. Yeah. yeah. What is the next segment of the show? I can never remember. And it's not me padding for time while I find the You know what we've side. never had? We've never had anybody write, like, on a, on a bathroom wall, for a good time, download the Weekly Planet podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever you find podcasts. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. Nice. Don't get caught, though. All right, ready? Do you know what it's time for? Oh, it's time for what we're reading. Yep. And then what we're going to read. It is. I'm doing a thing. What are we reading today? <laughs> Just to quickly talk a little bit more about Doctor Strange, and this is not really a spoiler. Okay. I think in the way that they built to... <clears throat> Sounds emotional, though. You get oh, emotional. Oh, it's my throat. <clears> throat> I think in the way that, like, uh, I think they were kind of figuring out a bit as they went, mm-hmm. at least initially in the first phases of the Marvel movies, I think they have a bigger idea of what they're going to do and we mm. don't know what it is yet. Yeah, and right. I think there are little kind of deviations they can make along the way, but I think they already know what the end point is of this. Yeah, right, right, right. You know? And I think mm. it's just not entirely clear what that looks like at this point. It's just them rolling around in piles of cash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Who's this? It's dog Hello. time, everyone. Hello. Hello. All right, dog time's over, everyone. <laughs> Back it in. I'm doing a thing. Westworld? Whoa. Wow, we're back. Uh, oh, and not only, well, you, yeah, we didn't stop for you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Mason. Yes. What are you reading this week? Well, this is the same when we talk about what we're doing. Yeah. We're rough, I watched one around. episode of each of the two following shows. Go on. One, The Offer, which is on Paramount+. The Offer? has been on for, no, 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 American no, 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 it's the office. Oh, yeah. No, what were you saying? The about- offer is about um, the the um, production of The Godfather. It's oh, the, yeah. It's the kind of it's a it is a, a docudrama about getting the, the Godfather made. You know, adaptation. It is is a big big time body cast. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Miles Teller is 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 uh, in it. Matthew Good, Giovanni Ribisi, Colin Hanks is in it, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of subplots going on for this first episode. I'm like. Oh, there's, there's so much. Too many? Happening. I need to Maybe. rewatch The Godfather, a movie I watched 20 plus years ago. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. its sequel, Godfather 2, a movie I've never seen. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. So it's good? Uh, I, I don't mean, know there's yet. a lot of sub, subplots, and <laughs> that, that has me very intrigued. Yeah, right. What's another thing that you're watching? Uh, and I watched an episode of uh, Chapel Wait. What's Chapel Wait? Chapel Wait is. The a... Office. Sorry, go on. <laughs> James. <laughs> James. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's it's a new adaptation of Oh, the offer forty five percent Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know okay. if I want to commit to it. There's four there's four episodes out on on uh, Paramount Plus right now, and I'm like, boy, what good is this? cast, great cast, incredible, good um, cast, Mason, and executive produced by Dexter Fletcher. I like Dexter but Fletcher. Once again, a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Oh, also big audience yeah, score though. I, I've just noticed this actually. Um, Miles Teller's character is is Albert Ruddy, who was like a producer from that era. He's like the main guy, He's having a ruddy executive good time. producer on this show, Albert Ruddy. Wow! So you always, you always, yeah. I, I don't know. I've, I've immediately lost faith. Is this interesting enough to be a movie, the series? I don't know. I don't yeah. know yet. I don't know. Are they like? Is anyone, is anyone ever like? I've got a great book. Did anyone say that? I've got this great book, and we want to make it into a movie. Who plays the author? Mario, oh, Mario Puzo. Puzo. Yeah. It's bloody. Um, hang on. I'll tell. I'll tell you. It's bloody uh, Patrick Gallo. Okay. Yeah. What do you think about that? I don't think anything about it. No, you think about him. Well, I will now, certainly, okay. Mason. He's, yeah. he's he's one of the guys in The Irishman. Okay, so um, you've watched two shows. Anyway, Chapel, oh. yeah, I watched two episodes. One episode each. Chapel Waits got Adrian Brody in it. It's it's Salem's Lot again, is what it oh, is. Oh, okay. Is it good? Yeah, I liked it. What's that on? What's it called? Stan. It's on Stan. Chapel's Mates? Yeah, Chapel's Mates. What's it yeah. called? Yeah. Chapel's Vampires. What is it? Chapel Waits. <laughs> Look up Adrian Brody. <laughs> you look him up. Okay, I will. You tell me what you think. Oh, he's handsome. Oh, 63% Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, cool, I liked it. This is not how you should um, assess series, by the With way. one episode and then, <laughs> and then episode look up the Rotten Tomatoes tomato. score. No, it's a bad idea. I think I'm going to commit to Chapel Wait, though, just because. <laughs> Did you watch uh, the Netflix thing? What Netflix the... thing? Oh, The Office? <laughs> Oh, you you don't. I think that's, I think that's gone off the off, It is. Off no, is it here? I don't know. We've got Superstore at the moment here. Mm. No, the Netflix vampire one. 
Midnight Mass. Yeah. Yes, I liked it. It was very good. Mm. All right. You know what I watched? Strange New Worlds, the new Star Trek series. Mm. So it's got uh, it's Christopher Pike, mm-hmm. Anson Mount. It's and got he, Rip- he, he manages a paper company, is that correct? That's correct. Wow. Yeah. This is, the, uh, this is the American version of... <laughs> Yeah, right, right. <laughs> of Strange New Worlds, yeah. <laughs> the British version's a bit sadder. <laughs> yeah. The Enterprise, the walls are very beige. <laughs> That's right. Uh, but it um, uh, it's getting a lot of, like, praise, and I think it's justified. It does feel like an update to, like, original Trek where the yep. first episode, at least, they go to a strange new world and there's, like, a weird little conflict they have to deal with and they have to, like, deal with the diplomacy and, like, mm. it, not having themselves seen and, you know, but often they'll... Just be like, ah, oh, fuck it. This is what we're aliens, you know. Sure. <laughs> and it, 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 like, the, he's really good as like um, the, the the captain, and he also knows that he's going to get all burnt up and put in a chair at some point. Like, he knows that's yeah, coming right. off the back oh, of Discovery. He, yeah, yeah, right, right. So yeah, I I, I really liked it. Very uh, good. As someone who's watched nine episodes of the new series of Picard and just might not watch the last episode. Or I might, I don't know. I don't even hate it. But um, Oh, you're 9 out, you're nine out of 10 on nine that show. 9 out of 10, mate. That's a, cl- that's a 9 well, out of 10. Well, I looked at Rotten Tomatoes and that's that when echo. I knew to stop. No, yeah, I haven't yeah. looked at it. I'm not like, I don't care enough about Star Trek to be like, this is the worst, what a, what an absolute treachery. What, what have they done mm. to Picard? I'm like, I don't care. I don't care at all, really. Uh, you know? uh-huh. But I have other opinions about other things. I mean, not firm opinions. No, that's true also. Yeah, I'm pretty... Yeah. Uh, I'm <laughs> pretty lax on a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Anything else, Mason? Or should we just move to the next segment of the show? No, I've been pretty busy this week. I bet you have. Watch Doctor Strange. Yeah, I bet you have, mate. I bet you've bloody been busy. Oh, shout out to thank and thank you to all the most people we met there. At, at you the met premiere. a bunch of fun. listeners at the Doctor That's Strange cool. premiere. That was fun. I met people on the way out. I met people on the way in. Whoa. It was really nice. Yeah. I uh, I met people during. You know, the guy who was standing up and I was like, pleased to meet you during the screening. That was me. <laughs> was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't and then know I that. sat down and I'm like, can you believe that guy, James? Can you believe that guy? But it was me every time. <laughs> I met uh, a lovely couple who were, I assume they were a couple, maybe they weren't, but uh, who were like, um, who's, who's uh, came up to me uh, afterwards and said uh, that we got them through lockdown, which we really appreciated because we were dying. That was brutal. <laughs> so <laughs> we're, we're glad that some people got joy. Uh, we, we brought some joy to at least two people in That's that time right. period. So we'll that was, take it. That was really cool to hear. Mm. Anyways, Mason, what is they, next? Uh, they subscribe to Big Sandwich? I don't know, to be honest. But uh, you know what? I'll take compliments and then you don't have to subscribe. Oh, I won't nice. push anything on you. Well, you know what I mean? Biggest compliment gets a free month of Big Sandwich? <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> no, all right, sure. Why not? <laughs> God, how awful. How, what an awful man I would be to be like, <laughs> to accept that. But I accept. Wow. What's next, Mason? Uh, the next segment is the letters segment. Wow. And there's a theme to the letters segment. I hope and so. If I click this button, yeah, you, you should get to do hear it. it. Yep. I think. The classic one was the letters, oh letters, we love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now, we're going to do letters. Now, James. Yeah. Uh, when I play that off YouTube, obviously. I know and that. Then, then underneath, uh, it suggests me many things. And when one in in this instance, it has suggested our Inhumans video. <laughs> oh, so, so that's a bit of fun, isn't it? That's good to see that out back in the universe. I actually just saw a tweet and I lost it immediately. But it was Sam, something like Sam Raimi asked the question, what if the third act of a Marvel movie was actually good? And it's got like 16,000 likes. Whoa. So that hey, here's an email from Nate. Well, if you do want to reach the show, email the show, weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com, send through your compliments, or hashtag weeklyplanetpod <laughs> at twitter.com, send through your compliments. Wow. Go for it. Wow. Uh, and, uh, th- uh, Nate says, I got Kevin Smith to say Monthbius. <laughs> oh, okay. Hey, mates, on last week's episode of Fat Man Beyond, Kevin Smith said the infamous words, it's Monthbius, and I would like to claim responsibility. I make the artwork for the podcast, ah. and when I sent Kevin the Morbius-themed art for this week, I told him that Monthbius is not over. I must have morbsepted him because he later dropped the line on the podcast and the rest is history. That's really good there stuff. You go, both. Uh, I hope you, you guys got a kick out of hearing Kevin Smith say it's month beers. Oh, we did. Uh, from Nate. We I did. mean, he was late because I'd already declared month beers over at that point. Yeah, it's unfortunate for him. So isn't if you could it? just email him again and tell him that tell month him it beers is, is officially over, yeah. cancelled. Not he, just over cancelled. And he's cancelled and he's fired. Yes, that's you right. Could tell him that. <laughs> Uh, and tell him if you could wear full length pants for once in your goddamn life, Kevin Smith, if you wouldn't mind. What would you want those pants to look like in your mind? Oh, jeans, jeans, regular jeans. Yeah, but like wide and maybe like a little bit short. Just jean shorts, if you could. So jeans. Just you continue wear wearing jeans. his jean shorts. 
<laughs> you dogged yourself back around. I did, yeah. I, I couldn't. I just couldn't picture him in regular length pants. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. My I'm brain like, just. What do you want him to look like? Yeah. And I couldn't figure out what that would uh, be. I guess the answer is, yeah. Just keep, keep. Just tell him keep wearing those jean shorts, bro. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Good stuff. I've got a tweet here from uh, oh Thomas goodness. who says, "Hey, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Here's a letter. Get a you cheeky bo- uh, week weekly boys. And what, uh, what uh, and what do you think this first half of Phase Four, uh, Thor Four is halfway through this phase, would look like without COVID interrupting? They just shuffle uh, a lot of release dates around. Uh, do not dismay. And it sounds like Kevin had plans for a lot more interactions between these series and films, especially for Loki." Multiverse of Madness, WandaVision, and No Way Home. I think that is probably true. I can think of one, for example, there was some America Chavez concept art where she was going to be the one introducing the multiverse in No Way Home. Ah, oh, I and see. And through their various reshirts and reshirts, reshirts mm. and shufflings about. I can't remember why, but they ended up changing it to what they ended up doing in that movie. But, yeah, it does feel like there were some other things that they were supposed to film that they haven't. I know Kingo... They wanted to get him for Moon oh, yeah, Knight. That's right. I don't yeah. know whether the, I don't think that was necessarily a. Yeah, they tried to make that happen though, but it was speaking of all the Moon Knight. All the Moon Knight recaps are done. We did it. Oh, Collings just uh, edited up. I uh, finished up the last one for episode six. That's on our YouTube channel. If you want to check it out. Uh, but yeah, what do you think? Do you think that's? Do you think what would this? Do you think it would be a more like? Yeah, I don't know. I think. I mean, I, I guess it's a. I mean, it's it's certainly like a, a fine line to tread in the sense of like. Maybe they maybe when Endgame finally hit, they were like, "Can this can this work again? Or are mm. people gonna, yeah, you know?" Because I, I I think a lot of I I saw a lot of sentiment on the internet. It was like, you know, I loved everything up to Endgame, but I am exhausted now from watching so <laughs> many movies. Yeah, and I have, yeah. I, I'm sure the feedback has gotten to them, and they're like, "Look, if we tie everything together, people hate that." And and and, and you if you want to see if I, if you want to see Kingo, your favorite character, you got to watch Moon Knight. Yeah, and so on and so forth. I wonder if people. I wonder if they're like, uh, let's let's loosen it up a um, little. I bit mean, here. it seems to be working to some extent, considering the opening of Doctor Strange. You know, mm. but yeah, I don't know. What's next, Mason? Uh, this is an email from John. John, who says I got stuck in an elevator at work, and it's Nick Mason's fault. I knew it. Yeah, I pushed him in. Yeah, good. <laughs> crowbarred the door. <laughs> uh, John says I work at the library at my college, and I was bringing a cart of books down to the first floor the other day while listening to the new episode of the podcast. Uh, Mason was talking about El Muerto, the movie that will not actually be made. Yes. When the library just when the sorry when the elevator just stopped in between the second and third floor, I spent the next forty minutes waiting for maintenance to send someone over, using the podcast to distract me from the weird situation. About halfway through, I got a call from maintenance, and the guy told me not to worry about it, and then have me out of there before the end of the week. No. Wow, that's great. It's good, right? So he's out. Um, he's. I mean, he's taken a photo of himself in the elevator, so I can. So only, no. I can only presume he's still in the elevator. Mm. Doesn't say he got out. At least he's got phone reception. Yeah. Do you reckon there's a Wi-Fi in that, in that elevator? Uh, Do you reckon there's a phone charging port? Do you reckon he's got a charger with him? Probably not. At least probably he's got not, a bunch no, no. of books to read, I always, guess. Always keep the charger with you. Also, bit of a bit of an issue, no smoking in that elevator. Oh, God. Because, I mean, that's the perfect place to I'd start I'd immediately want to like, right? start smoking. <laughs> you see that like sign, a, you're like, oh, my God. Stuck in this elevator. I just want to just fill this room up with cigarette smoke. It's, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a very gold elevator as well. So gold, wasn't Why is it? That so gold well, because it's a bloody, bloody those institutes of higher learning. You know, they're getting those. That's true. Getting all those grants and funneling it into a that gold elevator. That sounds about right. Everybody's yeah. always doing their gender studies, and that upsets me. I think, Mason. <laughs> that's, that's right. You know that thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. always like education. You mean gender studies? Yes, the only education that there is now. <laughs> gender studies. Fucking hell. Anyways, Mason, yes. hashtag Weekly Planet Pod also from Ninja Dude who says, as a father, do you think, what do you think about dads wearing fanny packs or bum bags, cool or uncool? I think any kind of utility that gets you through the day is <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. you know, especially yeah, right. as a father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think as a, as a fashion accessory, it can work. Well, young people do it across the chest now. That's cool. They, they've, got, they've, got, they've given them a different name now that I cannot recall, but it's, it's, just, it's just a bum bag Yeah, they put it... Put it across. Well, I have a bag kind of like that kind of yeah, thing. Nice, Remember nice. When you saw it the other day? Yeah. And then when I took it off, you were like, were you wearing that the whole time? And I was like, yes, I'm amazing. And I was. It's incredible. I agree. Yeah. So whatever it takes, basically. Mm. You got anything else? Uh, this is from Julian. Okay, Julian. Outlander does not have any Vikings. No, Hello, James know. and Mace. I was listening to episode 431 of the podcast. Couldn't help but be bothered by the misconception that Outlander has Vikings in it, as my mum is the number one Outlander fan in the world. 
She has read all the books and watches every new episode as they air weekly. So to clear up the confusion, Outlander does not have any Vikings, but then again, I have not watched the show myself, and maybe one appears in an episode or two. Interesting. Yeah. Makes you think about the future of cinema. Doesn't it, though? Yes. Right? We still don't know what it is about the show Outlander. That's Vikings, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Vikings in time. Time Time-traveling Vikings. Time-traveling Vikings. I just saw a tweet here from Tom Holland Updates. Whoa. Uh, It says six years ago, this is from May 7th though, six years ago we got our first look at Tom Holland as a new Spider-Man. That was six years ago. My God. Man, six years ago. That means in that time somebody has gone through the entirety of high school. They were 12 and then they were 18. Imagine being an age and then a different age. Can you imagine? No. That's good stuff. I've always been the age that I am now. What's that like? Youthful. Very, very good. Good and youthful. I've got a note here that just says wedding spoons. Do I have to do this? (laughs) What? Up top, I said there was a wedding. Oh yeah, I mean you could have just gone. Some, I mean somebody would have called you somebody on it, not me. Somebody would have called me on it. Wow. Well, All right. Okay. Oh, here's an email from Cheetah Looker. And then I'll do found wedding spoons. Found your partner on here, <laughs> James. You might want to check this out. Is your partner being faithful? A simple search can unveil the truth. Oh really? Their phone number on this side and find out. So I give them my phone number. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then they find out whether no, my into their is. phone number. Oh yeah. P.S. This site uses deep web tech and the results can be very surprising. Be prepared. Okay. Yeah. Send to stop to receiving me, yeah. messages, please visit here or mail your request. <laughs> Do they got an address? There's an address. P.O. It's a P.O. box in New York City, baby. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Incredible. Wow. Well, that's uh, that's it's good to know. We never mentioned the there's a there's a new still of uh, Thor and Lady Thor. Oh, that's true. Oh, that was just released today. I think they're looking great. She Thor. looks taller. And Chris Hemsworth? That's not true. No, taller than she normally is. I think you're is. looking at it askew. You're looking at askew. You mm. askew. Jorts. Uh, yeah, no, it looks good, right? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What a pairing. Yeah. Do you reckon they're going to get back together? There will be love in the air. Yes. Hammers will collide? Correct, yes. Very good. Anyway, wedding spoons, Mason. Okay, all right. Okay, so the, the, the joke that you told, right? I'm listening. And it was also a joke over like many minutes. Wait, I wasn't entirely listening, but now I am. I've put my phone okay. down. So when I said earlier I was listening, I wasn't listening, but so, I am listening now. So he's like, here's the thing at the wait. I'm going to check my phone though. <laughs> That's fine. He's like, here's the thing about the wait staff at this reception center, right? They're really efficient. Okay. Right? There's something like this. Yeah, yeah. And so there was a moment where like a spoon fell on the floor uh-huh. and then straight away wait staff came in and they're like, here's an extra spoon and they put it on the table. And straight away, obviously, I'm like, this is not a true story, but okay, let's, let's, see, let's see where this goes, right? Anyway. I think I've heard the setup to this, but I would love to hear where it goes. Great. So then uh, he's like, why do you have a spoon? And they're like, well, it's sufficient. So basically if anybody drops in, you know, it's, it's good to be prepared for all mm-hmm. the uh, situations. And then later went up to the bar and the person had a, a piece of string coming out of their fly. And they're like, what's with the... What's with the, the, the string and the fly or whatever? And the person was like, well, you know, this is for efficiency. So when I go to the bathroom and I want to, you know. Doesn't have to wash his hands. Well, not, that, no, that and you can, it can get it out quicker. Okay. Which I'm, is like, and it, you know, as opposed to it taking 10 to 15 seconds, you can just pull the string. Okay. Like 10 to 15 seconds. I'm like, <laughs> then your numbers are way off, but all right. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, and, and, the good, and he's like, well, how do you put it back in or whatever quickly? And he goes, oh, that's what we use the spoon for. Yes. But I'm also like, what do you mean? Like you get the spoon. Why would that be quicker? I mean, the hygiene thing makes sense, right? Because then mm. you don't have to wash your hands. But he didn't specify it was hygiene related. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So it's just people using a string and a spoon <laughs> to go to the bathroom mm-hmm. for time purposes. I think it's a good joke. Is it? No. no <laughs> okay, kidding. good. Was that worth me bringing up here? Yeah, I loved it. Oh, I have heard that joke before now that I... Was it told like that? More or less. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, if you've got any jokes... How many more ways could that joke be told? <laughs> well, the hygiene thing makes more sense. Right. There should have been an emphasis on the hygiene, mm. and there wasn't. Yeah. Anyway, tough gig, man. Wedding reception. I mean, and you booed him. And I booed... I had to. <laughs> I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but I don't get it, you know? Anyways. So what are you spooning your dick back into your pants? <laughs> That's what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, Mason, mm-hmm. it's the end of the show. It is absolutely the end of the show. Thank you so much, folks, for listening to whatever this is. Fifteen Some... seconds to fifteen seconds. Yeah. What are you doing? Rummaging around in there. <laughs> Make any sense? <laughs> Sorry, go on. It's probably because the, the string is in there, so it's probably like like a, untangling some headphones. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Mason's doing all the actions. <laughs> uh, folks, uh, thank you for uh, telling your friends about the podcast. Yes, subscribing, yes, yes. 
uh, to the podcast on your podcast catcher of choice. And thank you so much for leaving a five-star review because every time somebody leaves a nice review, out, it ends up uh, bloody in front of somebody else and they're like, oh, I might give this a shot. James, hello, you got any hello. nice reviews there? You know I do, Mason. I'm just bringing them up right now. This is one's from Matt Like Bat who says, five stars. I booked these two for my children, child's birthday party. They showed up and edited a podcast. I asked if they knew any tricks and the Australian one kicked me, kicked my shin. The podcast was pretty good too. Uh, that's just an app. Can you believe that? Incredible. And this mm. one's from The Doctor, 14415166. He says, bananas. This podcast is absolutely bananas. Like the fruit. My goodness, I want a banana. And you should get one. That's good. Mm. You a banana fan? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Oh, my God. What a delightful fruit. I mean, you have to plan in advance, obviously. Having need, a banana. You need a couple of days. That's true. Because you can you buy me. Speaking of which, I've got to put a banana in the freezer for my smoothie tomorrow, Mason. Thank you for reminding me. You're very welcome. I'm going to Oh, you know myself. what I have been reading? What have you been? This is, I'm going to add this in anyway. Okay. I know we're outside of the segment, what we were in. It's we're fine, read. Mason. But if people want to subscribe to this, there's a uh, there's a newsletter called Dracula Daily, which I mentioned to you. Oh, while you back, did? Which is, uh, for people who don't, who haven't read the original Bram Stoker's Dracula, yeah. it is, of course, a series of like uh, like journal entries and and like uh, like newspaper clippings and all this sort of stuff that sort of builds a story. It's based on the office. Yeah, it's based on the office exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. And um and they're in they 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 span from like May to November I think. Ooh. And so there's a you can subscribe to this service called Dracula Daily. And when it, whenever there is an entry, it's you don't get it every day, despite the name. It's full of lies. Ah. But uh, nah. whenever, whenever there is an entry on a particular day, you get emailed the journal or the what have you. Today, Jonathan Harker's journal. Jonathan learns that shaving can get dicey. Oh, I've seen that in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does it and the Dracula's like, give me that. Yeah, yeah, give me right. the blood on your anyway, bloody neck. Anyway, people should subscribe to that if you want to get a little dose of Dracula. I do want to get a little dose of Dracula. Anyway, folks. That sounds uh, cool. If you, Maybe uh, I'll just read the book. You could, I mean, good, good luck finding a copy of that. It's true. They're all in that elevator. That's right. <laughs> uh, folks. Uh, mm. If you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at Gmail, at Facebook, mm. at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod Reddit and Discord. You can follow our great friend Rob Collings, who edits this podcast and edits videos and does all kinds of amazing stuff. Yes, you can follow yes, him yes. on Twitter at Raw Collings. You can follow him at The Weekly Planet on Twitter. You can follow me on Twitter at Wikipedia Brown and on Instagram, Nick May. So. You can follow James, Mr. Sunday Movies, everywhere. You know it. Including YouTube. That's right. Check out that YouTube channel he's got over there. Uh, there's a Star Wars thing this week. Um, nice. Something. And then Revenge of the Sith video That's game. Terrific. And then regular, the, the regular Revenge of the Sith video might be pushed because it's like a 46-minute video. So it might be not next week. It might be the week That's after. It's a real deep dive. I don't know yet, though. That's true. We'll see. Folks, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies, chuck in a buck or any amount you Bling. wouldn't miss if it fell out of your pocket. That's how we do things over if here. If it fell out of your fanny pack that you wear around your chest. Right? Yeah. God, that's that's cool. Is it? Yes, I think so. Great. Uh, or if you're a big, big spender. I am. Go to bigsandwich.co, nine US dollars per month. Is that all? Bonus podcasts. Movie commentaries. Wow. Dark Man, Doctor Strange. We've got it all covered. Dark Universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm going to do next for uh, for a movie commentary well i think we said at the end we'll do it we'll do something real just a real normie thing spider-man a mm, spider-man star wars haven't we done every yeah, star, we've done wars? Star, we've done wars, yeah. star wars spider-man i guess we could do a spider-man what's something normal what's something a normal person would watch i don't think i think our gauge for normal broke a lot a so long i mean time tell ago. us what someone what's right normal, normal guys thing? what's, what's a something normal your dad thing? watches no not that something no. your folks watches you know what i mean outlander Outlander, Did yeah. Do a commentary on an episode of Outlander. I don't like Vikings that much. Yeah, no, neither do I. I stopped watching Vikings because I forgot where I was up to. Mm. So I was just like, I don't know what, what to do now. Very true. Yeah. Folks, uh, uh, thanks to you out oh, there. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. But also, <laughs> oh yeah. sometimes I lose track, especially when it's late. What people don't know about us is that one of us uh, has a brain that only works after a certain time of day. Yep. And one of us has a brain that only works before a certain time of day. That's right. So if we get if we if we find ourselves in the sweet spot, which we never do, we never do. Then it's a great episode. <laughs> but otherwise, it's a, it's one or both of us being like, oh, absolutely. We just need sleep. Yeah. Uh, if uh, folks, uh, thank you to the Brood and the Basilisk Grim Rack and Pearl Musical Themes. If you want a T-shirt, you can go to uh, T Public. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah, T-Public, you're welcome. T Public dot com and search mm. for the Weekly Planet. Get yourself a T-shirt. Why yeah. wouldn't you? Uh, get get trapped in our elevator. Mm. Get trapped in an elevator wearing a Weekly Planet t-shirt. Absolutely. Why wouldn't you? Anyway, that's the whole show next week. Next week, what's another, out? Another, I don't another know. Another Is thing. it Top Gun yet? I don't know. Something's out. 
What's out, Mason? Let me check the website of movie. Let me go to movie.net. Okay, check movie.net. Do, 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 You're do, actually going to go to movie.net? No, I'm going to go to I'm going to go to movie.net and see what comes up. I wouldn't if I were you. No, I'm, I'm going to do it. No, no, I did, you don't want to go there. I um, own it. I did something terrible there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Okay, uh, Doctor Strange 2. No, we've got a week break mm-hmm. and then League of Super Pets and then Top Gun. So we've got a bit of a, a, bit of a window there to do some okay. other stuff. If you go to movie.net, yeah. first of all, the connection's not secure, so watch out there. But you've got three links you can click. Uh, you can click on best online. Yep. Online. Wow. Or free video meetings online. Oh, free! Imagine if you're out there being. Imagine at this point you're like, <laughs> God, I just and my business just needs some free video meeting software. But where can I find it? Well, then, guess what? You can find now it. Now you movie, know. Movie.net. That's right. Yeah. All right, everybody. I'm just going to check movie.net.au. Please. No one's got that. Surely. No, somebody would have actually. It's probably someone we know. <laughs> probably. There's <laughs> somebody making it big in the world of online movie. It's not loading. That's, okay. that's classic Australian internet, though. Isn't it just? Yeah. yeah. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, grab that, Jamie, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.